Welcome to Saints on Cinema. I am Tim Wilde, and with me, not always, but sometimes, is Josh Edlow. And the day has come. We are here to do our top seven, what is it, Ro <laughs> uh, Rocky movies, um, asterisks. Here's the thing. Um, we've been planning on this episode for a very long time, and this, uh, the, the, our love for Rocky is one of the, the foundations of our friendship and one of the uh, things that led to this show. And this is a kind of an important episode for us because this is where you're gonna see why Josh has like no taste in what's good about a movie. He doesn't have any way to analyze the qualities of a Rocky film. And he just boasts that he's this big, huge, awesome fan and it's all a bunch of crap. So you're gonna have this demonstrated and shown today. Um, I, think, I think the fact that you are seeing right here that uh, this is the most important episode and Tim still botched the beginning should tell you that uh, I'm right and he's wrong. Okay. But anyway, this has been a long time coming. We've had many, many, many conversations about a lot of different aspects of the Rocky movies and a lot of arguments about which ones are better and why. And this is the first time we're bringing, and that's not the first time we're talking about Rocky, but the first time we're gonna actually lay it out right here. And he doesn't know what's on my list. I don't know what's on his list, except I know his are wrong. And we're gonna go through but the thing we need to um, put in here is that Josh and I didn't put this on the Facebook page when we announced the episode, but we specifically did not include Creed in our list. And Josh, go ahead and explain why. Yeah, I think the reason we didn't include Creed in them is because, in my opinion, Creed is a fantastic spinoff. Uh, I would say one of the best spinoffs of an original film I've ever seen. And on top of that also, I think it's good enough that you can take the Creed movies and have let them stand on their own. Yeah. And so because of that, these are not, I don't, Creed, Creed is not a Rocky movie. It's a Creed movie that has a Rocky character in it. So I, we felt with this one, we wanted to keep the Rocky list to Rocky movies. Right. Although I think we'll probably discuss within this where maybe we would have included a Creed movie or what we if we think they're better than certain Rocky movies, but they do certainly, we're not going to officially put them on the list because they are really going to, the Creed movies deserve to stand on their own, so. I agree. And that's yeah. the first thing that we agree about in this episode. That's probably the last thing we're going to agree about on exactly. this Exactly, <laughs> exactly. The very that's, last. that's the whole thing. The Creed movies are yeah. awesome. They're great sports movies, and they're in the same formula of a Rocky movie, but they're not Rocky movies. Rocky, the character, though, of course, obviously prevalent in the, um, in the Creed movies, the movies are about him. And just because um, you have the character in the story, it's not a Rocky movie. Just like Superman 3 shouldn't be a Superman movie because it's just a Richard Pryor comedy guest starring Superman. That's what the Creed movies are as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I had to throw my Superman reference in there. Okay, yeah, so how do we do this? I think, uh, let's, oh, do you have a comment? You had a, a, a I was just gonna say that was impressive. I'm wondering if you want to bring up how badly you hated The Last Jedi before we go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not a Skywalker film. <laughs> All right, um, so here's what here's what I did. I made my top, this is a top seven list because that's our brand, but there's only six to choose from if we exclude Creed. Because that's the thing, if you, well, let me ask you this, Josh. If you included Creed, you had a top seven out of eight movies, what would, ah, uh, you can't answer that. That would give you a list. That, anyway, that's a good thought though. What would you kick out? Yeah. Um, okay, let's do this. I want you to run through your list from seven to one, and then I will punch long and counter and counter and counter until you're like bleeding on the floor and you're out of breath and you can't climb up the ropes. And then I'll bomb in there and play with your mohawk and I'll give you my top seven list and have you down and out <clears throat> like that. Or it'd be like you beat me a little bit, uh, like they beat Rocky in every movie and then he comes back and wins when you give your list. So we can do that. That's exactly all what right. I mean. Okay, hit okay. me. What's so, your number? Right. Seven, five, six, six. six. Yeah, okay. So I think, now I want to preface this before I say this, okay? I want to make this 100% clear to all of our fans, the many, many fans that we have and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which all of you should do, by the way. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, show the little, put the little love button in this little love black love box support. that you have over here. Be our yeah. Adrian in the corner. We love you, St. Sun Cinema. I love you. Be that girl. Okay. So I want to preface this by saying, I love all of the Rocky movies. They're all good. 
So just because one is on my, the bottom of my list doesn't mean I don't like it. I like them all for different reasons, but there is a definitive, in my opinion, definitive last worst of Rocky movies, and that is Rocky V. Rocky V is, in my opinion, even though I like it for different reasons, it is the worst of the franchise. And I think even Sylvester Stallone would say it is. So uh, I already Brexit, know that- Do you think huh? it, is this like when the movie he wishes wasn't out there, do you think he re regrets it or resents it? I don't think he regrets it. And, and one thing that I, you know, look, I, I think it's a good movie. It's entertaining. I watched it. I've watched it multiple times. And if it's on TV, I watch it. There are times when I just turn it on and watch it because I do like the movie, but it is the worst of the franchise. <laughs> And, and the thing is, is I, one thing I do like about it is, is the, the one thing I like about Rocky five is that it, it finally puts Rocky back in the position he was in, in Rocky one. And that is what made it so endearing. The fact that he was a poor guy from the neighborhood trying to figure out who he was and Rocky five put it back in that position. And if you didn't have Rocky five, you couldn't have the story that you have in Rocky six uh, or Rocky Freeze. Balboa. Creeds wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for Rocky Five. None, none of it would have been the same, and so I do appreciate Rocky Five, and there and there are some funny things about it, but it is, in my opinion, a big downgrade from the other movies. There's not Tommy Gunn is not an exciting villain. Um, you know, in each of the Rocky movies, there's a, a really good uh, antagonist, I guess is what you would call it. We would, you know, between Apollo Creed and then Apollo Creed turning, you know baby face or good however you want to call it when he's fighting mr t and then ivan drago tommy gunn just doesn't fit that plus there's not an actual boxing match between rocky or anybody the street fight is fun and entertaining but it's just not the same um and also i you know i, I hate to talk about the dead but but sylvester stallone's son was not great as a as his son i didn't i didn't like his son acting. Was not great as his son <laughs> no he was not a good actor in the in the Dang. acting he gave i did not think he was he was good i mean i appreciate it was his son but it all seemed like acting okay um so yeah you know but there were some really funny parts in that movie like it's one of the funnier i think of the of the movies just yeah okay well first before i I uh, respond to everything you just said. What what are the funny parts you're talking about? You're talking about how he's like really punchy and stuff, or what? No, just some of the things he says, like some of the little one-liners he says in the movie are really funny. And then you know, Polly coming down as as Santa and saying some of the things he's like, "Well, where I come from," he says, "Yo, yo, yo," you know, just little things like that that are, <laughs> okay. that are kind of funny. You know what I mean? Like, um, yo, 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 it's ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just you know, little things like that. Uh, okay. That, that I thought were funny and, um, but it just, it, it, it falls a little flatter than the other movies. All right. First of all, I disagree. I think that his kid though, he's an annoying character. I think, I thought he did fine. I thought the kid playing him, like when he came in, he was getting all pissed off when Tommy was taking his, I mean, not the line where he says in the fight, he shouldn't have been at the side of the fight. That was dumb. But like when he was like talking about how he took his room and everything, he's talking to his girlfriend and everything, and his dad doesn't care, like all that stuff. I felt felt that was pretty real. And the best moment with the kid is when he ran in with his girlfriend when he got his jacket back, and and uh, and so Rocky is like um, too involved with uh, with Tommy Gunn and training. He's like, yeah, this great kid. He like didn't even hear what he said, and he like he won his jacket back by defending himself, but not from any tutelage from his father, but from freaking Polly of all people. I hate Polly. No, it wasn't Polly. It wasn't Polly. It was the, it was the little trainer guy that, that worked with, I don't remember his name, but he had a little trainer guy. That Polly was, was sitting there holding the bat. I swear it was Polly. He was no, it wasn't Polly. It's it, it, the guy is a, is a short stubby guy like Polly, but it's not Polly, it's another guy. Okay, whatever. But he would yeah. have the support of-, of Just, just of, goes of, to show you how little you know about these movies, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, the point is, is that when he came in excited about his jacket, and he wanted to go to celebrate with his father, who's a fighter, not because he punched a guy to get his jacket, but because he defended himself and he had pride and everything. And that was like one good thing going on in this kid's life. When he went in there with all the excitement, I believe that. And then later on, when he like walked off to go hang out with his friends at his birthday dinner or whatever it was. I don't remember anything about these movies. He, um, it was probably Thanksgiving or something. 
he leaves and like when Rocky's just like dumbfounded on why he doesn't want to spend time with them, like he's like, when, when did you start caring? And then he turns around and gives him that little speech. I can't remember word for word. Hey, come on, kid, I love you. No, you don't. Sure I do, you know? Because we were supposed to be like tight, like, like cross fingers. No, no, what you want is you and Tommy be tight. That's you really talking about. Oh, uh, don't say that. Why can't I say it? Since he's been here, it's Tommy this, Tommy that. You don't have no time for nobody, so I got no time for you. That yeah. was good. I mean, I think it was yeah. really believable. I thought in character, the kid did a good job. The kid was just annoying, but not Rocky's yeah. son. But the is the character is annoying, but so is Polly, and you love Polly. I hate Polly. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, I don't disagree with you. I do, I do remember the monologue he gives uh, when he's upset at his dad in the basement during Christmas. By the way, it's Christmas. Do I hear reindeer on my roof? You know, um, Rattlers and unbelievable is like a billion. Whoa! Come on. Look who's here! You know this guy? You got a weird family. Don't I know? <laughs> and, uh... That's not for and, <laughs> Yeah, and so, uh... But, uh... Uh, yeah, I just, in general, I don't know, maybe you're right. Maybe it's just the character was written annoying, you know? Yeah. Um, but at the same time... You were meant to like this character. You were meant to feel for the character because of what... About the negligence of his father. Which yeah, made him even yeah. spiral into being even more of a little tool. And you were just like, okay. Yeah, but he started. Um, I mean, he was there was a good little arc for that kid. Because the first day of school where he's kind of innocent, the girl comes up and flirts with him. And then um, the guys come up and steal his jacket and stuff. And she's like, hurry. You know, and she leaves. Like, that to where he was at the end of the movie, he had a good little arc there. That kind of was uh, yeah, parallel yeah, to what he was going through. So I think it was yeah, good. Fair, fair enough. I, I remember when they were walking into the... Uh, into the first day of school at the schoolyard um, yeah the schoolyard but i remember just thinking when he was walking around and when he asked him something he's like you know watch your back whatever he's like oh i intend to or whatever i just was like i want to kick the crap out of this <laughs> you know what I mean? like oh my gosh you know like yeah he's gonna get mangled so i don't know um i did like I, that scene too with rocky that was a really good sequence that we're gonna just end up doing reviews of all these movies but i think that that scene where he goes in it's like this is his first day well, his first day of the show, back in back on the streets, back in his old neighborhood, and he's walking the kid back. It's his first time. He doesn't have a Ferrari, Lamborghini driving around. He's walking the kid down the street to the school because he has nothing else to do. So, like that that conversation where he's teaching what it's like on the streets and watching back and all that stuff. Like that was really um, that was really cool to see Rocky remembering and he was kind of relapsing. And that was after he went into the attic. He found his old hat and jacket and everything. It was like, hey, this is setting you back to Rocky one. And seeing him interact with his kid was like, he's trying to prep his kid who's been pampered his whole life. Like, these things are gonna get real. And he was sharp and he had street smarts, but then those same street smarts failed him when he started messing around with Duke and Tommy Gunn. So that was kind of interesting. He was like with it. And then he like forgot his own lessons immediately. He wasn't watching his back. Oh, and the kid even said that, didn't he? I never lied to you. Tommy needed my help. So did I. And remember when you said to watch out for scams and deceptions? Yeah. You're the one that should have watched out. He said yeah, something. Yeah, that's he what you were saying. He was like, you know, you're the one who has the decept. You know, you're the one who should have been. When you were talking to me about deceptions, you were. The yes, one. that's right. And, you know, the thing is, is there are now that you think about you talk about that, there are a couple of things that I really liked about that movie. Again, I still think it's the worst, but I do. <laughs> But I, there are things I do no, like no about words. that movie. So yeah. one of the things I, I did uh, like about it was that scene where he's in his attic of his house before they're about to move back to the old, old neighborhood. And he puts on the hat and the jacket. And that was, like when I first saw it as a kid, I mean, I think I was nine or 10 when I saw it the first, the first time. And even back then, I thought that was such a cool moment because in Rocky two, three, four, and five, you see a progression of Rocky changing yes. into a more civilized, less street fighter type yeah. guy. I mean, Rocky two, he gets the leather jacket with the big tiger on the back, and then he gets the nice car. And then in Rocky three, he's riding motorcycles and you yeah. know wearing cashmere sweaters, and and then he just he, he keeps going from there. So when he puts that back on, you're like, yes, I'm getting Rocky back. Like the real Rocky is coming back. And, uh, and he immediately snaps back. So I, I did like that. And, uh, and I did like 
when they're walking in that, um, walking him to school and everybody's like, hey, cut, welcome back, Rock, you know, and he, you can see there's like a progression of him, how frustrated he is because he always kind of wanted to get out of that. He never wanted, he says in Rocky one, like my favorite line is I, when he's talking about in, in the first Rocky, my favorite line is he says, I'm gonna know for the first time in my life talking about fighting and, and finishing the fight with, right. with Apollo the Creed. Creed. Yeah. yeah, he said, I'm gonna know for the first time in my life that I wasn't just another punk from the neighborhood. Yeah. Nobody's ever gone the distance with Creed. And if I can go that distance, you see, and that bell rings and I'm still standing. I'm gonna know for the first time in my life, you see, that I weren't just another bum from the neighborhood. Right. And so now he's back and he's just people are saying, hey, Rock, welcome back. And he's realizing he feels like he's just becoming another punk from the neighborhood. Right. And and that's what makes the fight, the, the argument he has with Tommy Gunn when Tommy leaves and he's trying to tell Tommy, like, we got to get away from Duke. We got to get away from this promoter. He's just here to put the money. He's going to bleed you dry and all this stuff. And he's so frustrated with at, at, he's fighting with Adrian because he saw Tommy Gunn as the way for him to finally get them back out of the neighborhood, you right. know, and, and he was so frustrated that he was back where they started. Right, right, right. And, and I think that like that, that whole progression there, you can feel that, you know what I mean? Like if, if any, anybody who's, who's made it, you know, made a bunch of money or has, or has viewed themselves as improving their lives and then somehow have taken a step back has felt that same feeling. So you right. can really feel it. Uh, but again, I just generally think it, it there, there's better. All the other ones are better, in my opinion, for other reasons. So. Okay. All right. Fair so, enough. I just want to say this, though. Mm -hmm. Rocky V has the best fight. It's the best fight. You no. can't, I mean, I know it's not a boxing match, but it's a the best fight. Did I say three? I meant five. 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 Yeah, uh, I don't remember if you said three or not. But it's the best fight. Come on, you even with the I, three moves, which are great. I mean, this is, and Rocky Six, which has that one, the one, first rounds all one camera angle stuff. The, Rocky Five has the most, the most excitement, and the ups and downs are like a little more real because he's like in the street. And I'm sorry when we do. I'll oh, spoiler here. When we do a top seven most exciting moments in the Rocky franchise. When he uh, throw, when Tommy's in the diner, he throws down uh, Polly, and, and Rock gets out and says, "Yo, you knocked him down. Try knocking me down." He says, "Eight times that my ring's outside." That is like the most chilling, exciting moment. And then he gets outside, and the first round he's down, he's he's fighting him. He's like, "You are my brother." We were like, we were like this. And then he like gets him down, and then he has the little revelation from Mick and the, the train train. He's having his little PTSD, his little uh, his uh, spasm there. Then he gets yeah. up, and he says, "Yo." I didn't hear no bell or whatever. Like, oh my gosh, you can't be more charged up in any of the Rocky movies than that moment. It's so good. So I would agree with you. I was so I was in the theater first, first showing in I think it was in Modesto at the time. <laughs> okay. I was at the first showing of the theater of Rocky Five. And if you've ever been to a Rocky movie for the first showing, the crowd, it's like it's like you're going a real boxing match. It's like you're going to a real boxing match. Like the, the guys, everyone is super pumped. Right. And so when that scene happens, when he punches Polly and then he goes down there and Polly's like, you should have left him on the street where you yeah. found him. And then, and then he stands up and there's like that music, like that bass that, and he's standing yeah. up and everyone was like, Oh, it's on. You know what I mean? Like everyone was like, was cheering like crazy. And so when he says it, he's like, my ring's outside and they go out. Everyone's like, yeah. Now you knocked him down. Why don't you try knocking me down now? No, no. In the ring, in the ring. Tommy Gunn only fights in the ring. Come on, let's get out of here. My ring's outside. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. He only fights in the ring. My ring's yeah. outside. Yeah. <laughs> and so yes. it was uh it was it was nuts like and, and that whole fight like everyone was going nuts i mean every up and down everyone went crazy when he knocked yeah. him down the crowd was going crazy so yeah it was exciting no doubt uh it, it is an exciting it. fight but but i do think there was 
there was more drama in my mind in the fights uh, rocky probably the original rocky rocky 2 and rocky 4. i think those fights were more dramatic mm -hmm. because the stakes were a little higher i think so, they were different i've thought about this i think no, they're, they're different the stakes the are state different i don't think the the pride of his of the betrayal he felt in rocky 5 was any less valid than him trying to prove something to himself in rocky 1 and then going the and finishing what he started in rocky 2. The, these were we're getting on other movies but i i I, th I don't know i have my opinion about where the stakes were heaviest and i'll talk about that when i get to my list but uh, I, I think there was just a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, weight there that uh, a lot of people were like, oh, the fight was okay, but the rest of the movie was just stupid. It's because they were looking for a boxing match. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely a different movie, and that's not why I, I put it at the bottom. I know. I know. Yeah. I say, it's got a lot of praise. A lot of people crap yeah. on that movie. There's so much good stuff. I, I, think, I think the criticism is, is so unfounded, and it's based on the fact that people are expecting something different, and they don't get yeah. what they were. They didn't get what they were expecting. Right. Right. So now uh, my next one is I think this movie, even though it's the, <laughs> towards the bottom of my list, <laughs> I think this one is the most underappreciated Rocky of all of them. And that's Rocky two. And the reason for that is like, even, even me. Okay. I don't, I don't watch this one as much. I think this is my least watched Rocky movie. Uh, but the most important lines in Rocky come from Rocky too. Yo, Adrian, I did it. Comes from Rocky too. That's like the most iconic line in all of mm -hmm. of Rocky, right? Um, so while you're uh, saying that, can I just mention how much I hate when people are like like doing like movie quotes and stuff, and they're like, Yo, Adrian. He never says that any time in the story. He never ever says it like that. The way everyone has that little uh, their little what's the word their little uh, mimic of it, but like. He, he never, he's like yelling for Adrian. He's trying to find her in the first one or the second one. That's when you're talking no, about. No, the that first one, in the first one, he's trying to find, he wants her to come into the ring. In right. the second one, he actually won and he's he's pulling he's the, the, the belt up. He's at home. Yeah. Yeah. He says, yeah, right. oh, Adrian, I did it. But he doesn't go, Adrian. Like even in yeah. the Turtles, they mock it and it was wrong. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So in Rocky 1, that's from Rocky 1. He's They're trying to interview him and all he's doing is screaming Adrian because he wants he wants her in the ring. All he's thinking about is her. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. But Rocky 2, also I think that the, the score for the fight in Rocky 2 is so good and so dramatic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and also, I think that movie is so important because in Rocky 1, it's clear that Apollo Creed did not take Rocky seriously before the fight, right? Right. So he was not in great shape. You can see it like when, when, um, when Duke is watching Rocky on the news punch the meat, mm -hmm. he is telling Apollo Creed, he's like, hey, man, you might want to come and look hey, at this come watch this yeah. business. Yeah, and then Apollo Creed's like, ah, yeah, I mean business too, right? By the way, Apollo, I've got a couple of friends up in Toronto who'd probably be able to get you a pretty good tax break. I'm sure they like your friends. Hey, champ. You ought to come look at this boy you're going to fight on TV. Looks like he means business. Yeah, yeah, I mean business too. Hey, Shirley, you got any more coffee out there? And then Rocky, the first movie, Rocky is actually standing toe to toe with him. Like, it's not like he's getting beat up. You know, all the Rocky movies, it's always like this vision of him just getting his crap kicked and then somehow he wins at the end. But in the first movie, he knocks down Apollo Creed first. And it was the first time that Apollo Creed ever actually got knocked down ever yeah. in his career. Yeah. And so, so uh, Rocky II, he's fighting an, uh, Apollo Creed who was dead set. He was like, yes. I am going to murder him. I am yes. going to win. In fact, at the end of the movie, in the, before the last round, Duke is telling Apollo Creed, you've won on points, just stay away, right? And he's like, no, I'm going to finish him. Like, yeah. he wants to knock yeah. him down, right? And that's why Rocky wins, right? Because right. Apollo Creed just wanted to knock him down. And as, by the way, I also have to say, Apollo Creed is like the best non-villain villain ever. Because it's like, he he he's, he's a villain, but you understand where he's coming from. He's yeah. not really a villain. You know what I mean? He just has his own stakes. Right up there with Thanos, I guess, right? 
Well, no, Thanos is definitely a villain. Right, he's, a, he's an empath, but he's he's the hero. He's empathetic. Of yeah, he's definitely empathetic. But but Apollo Creed isn't even really a villain. He has his own trajectory. You know, he has his own thing. He was actually a decent guy. He gave Rocky a shot. He was more like, villain in the second one than the first one. The first one yeah. he was just a guy who was yeah. not taking him seriously. And the second one, he was like, no, it's it's on. And the press meeting was a bit of the first re revelation of that. And even how he behaved a little bit in the hospital um, right. when they show those scenes. Like, he was a lot more of a, of a of an antagonist in that one than he was in all the other ones. He wanted to embarrass yeah, but, him. He's like, but, but, I want his kids hounded and his people in the streets, people making fun of him. I want them to realize that he's being a coward. Like, that's right. pretty, that's villainous. But the reason he was doing that was because I know. Rocky, due to Adrian saying she didn't want him to fight anymore, she, and also because Rocky's eye was so jacked up. And by the yeah. way, I find it really interesting that in none of the other movies, the fact that he has a busted eye never comes up. Never comes up. Like, he has no vision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he has no vision in one of his eyes. You know what I mean? And so, but whatever, regardless of that, um, you know, he was just, he desperately wanted to get Rocky back for his legacy because Apollo Creed is a warrior and even Rocky says in the Creed movies and even in the in the Rocky movies that in his opi opinion Apollo Creed was the greatest fighter of ever of all time uh -huh. and I think that Rocky even knows this is just me speculating but I believe that the Rocky character realizes he caught Apollo Creed at the end of his career you know yeah. what I mean like it would have been really interesting to see Apollo Creed fight Rocky when Apollo Creed was in his prime he clearly was past his prime when he fought Rocky and so and he was really past his prime when he fought Ivan Dragon because he got murdered. So, spoiler. <laughs> so, um, anyway, yeah. You missed one most important part, or the one of the best yeah. parts of that movie, is what when, is um, what's his name? Who's the trainer, Paulo's trainer? Um, Duke, 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 right? Yeah. And Duke was like, when he was like, let it go, the let it go speech, when he was yeah. like, I saw him, when you when you got in the ring with him, I saw him like beat you like you, I've never seen anyone get beat before. And, or you beat him, sorry, he said, you beat him harder than I've ever seen beat anyone. And he kept coming back. Get this bum. You think I beat him the last time, do you? Hmm? You got the decision. Man, I won, but I didn't beat him. What are you afraid of, Tony? Honest? Yeah, honest. He's all wrong for us, baby. I saw you beat that man like I never saw no man get beat before. And the man kept coming after you. And we don't need that kind of man. And even and him even saying like you know he was people were writing and saying he was a disgrace to his race i mean like all sorts of things and he was just it, it and that just goes to show you what kind of a warrior that's what i love about apollo creed is that apollo creed is the biggest warrior like he just he can't he needs to be in the ring like that's just he can't he can't fathom he's just a he's got a killer instinct that he couldn't let go you know what i mean and that inform i think that informs and why i think it's so great the way that they portrayed the new creed because the new creed he's he's the product of an affair right arguably at a time when apollo creed was struggling with the, with a crisis of, of who, he, who he's supposed to be right and so um so it all kind of informs and comes together i love how they're all woven together but back to rocky too which is what we're talking about the other thing about that is is i love the stakes of there's another thing that comes from that like rocky chasing the chicken i love that like they think that's so great because that is actually an old school way of training like right. and um uh you know and, and i just love the the stakes of um adrian you know being you know pregnant. Being, sick, being pregnant and getting sick and being in the coma and him like this is more important than boxing and then her finally being like go win you know like hey, that the, when mickey says what are we waiting for like when she's like go do it and he's like and then the mute the bell rings and you're like yeah. and then he starts training you like, ah yes there's one thing i want you to do for me what come here what win win what are we waiting for take this 
Yeah, so so great movie, but because it's like it's the least watch the one I watched the least. And also because we've talked about this in other episodes, right? Uh there are two different types of Rocky movies. There's the dramas, which are one, two in, in Balboa, and then there's the prototypical 80s action movies, which are three, four, and five, even though five was in the ninth, early nineties. But yeah, still, yeah. those are the those are action movies, right? They all have their place. And Rocky One is a slow drama, but it's it's so well done, so well done. You just have to appreciate it from a filmmaking perspective. Right. And then Rocky Balboa is so well done. Rocky Two just kind of is not quite there. And so I put that one where I did because that's just my opinion. Rocky Two, as I watched it this last uh, last six months, I can't remember when it was. Um, I don't watch it every week like you do. But Rocky Two has, you already said, the best fights. It's underappreciated. But, I mean, you kind of forget about the fight because the first fight is, like, the iconic one because he, like, goes his first big fight. And then there's all the big celebrated fights with all these cartoon character villains for the rest of the series, except for Tommy Gunn. But then you have Rocky Two. but the way it was shot, the way the sound design was done, the way the punches, the, when you rewatch it, you pay attention to, like, the way it blends um, where the, the sound design is faded in and out with the commentators, with the way they're commenting on different aspects of what's happening in the fight. They comment in all the fights. But what, in that one, it's just done so well where it tear, carries you from round to round to round. You can see the progression of who's up and who's down and all that builds up for that last. And then it stops and shows that last round. That's some, kind of the formula. They show the first one or two rounds, then it montages to the last round. But this one is done so, so differently that you really, they all kind of transition with the narrative from the commentators, but you really kind of get a feel for what the fighters are actually experiencing and, and what their condition is, leaving the second round going into the last round. And then that final moment when they go down and then they're trying to climb up in slow motion, and this is really interesting, um, Hollow stops and looks over to see how Rocky's doing. Rocky's just more fixated on getting up. And I think that's really telling of everything that's happened with the two of them competing the whole time. Ro or Apollo is more fixated on Rocky and being able to win and beat and prepare for Rocky. Rocky's just focused on becoming the best fighter he can be. Rocky's just trying to climb the ropes. Apollo like is looking over, how's he doing? And that little bit of energy may have just been that one second. But anyway, but that, that fight is, is the best shot fight of all of them. I don't know if it's the most exciting, but I think it's the best fight as far yeah. as I'm I agree. And, and I think, like I said, the score really makes that fight dramatic. So. I mean, big time. And and uh, interesting thing you brought up about that, because if you remember Rocky Three, at the end of Rocky Three, after Rocky beats uh, beats Mr. T, and actually at the beginning of Rocky Four, they play the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's Apollo. He he tells Rocky in Rocky Three, after I do this and you beat him, you owe me a favor. And yeah. you find out that the favor is, is he wants to go into gym privately, one-on-one. -on -one, he wants to box him again. He wants a third fight. Right. And so that's what he does. And he says, as they're walking up there, he goes, when did you think about this? And he said, a few years ago. Three years ago, yeah. yeah and he goes, he goes, you beat me by one second. And, he said, and that's hard for a, he's like, one second. And that is hard for a guy of my intelligence to handle, right? right. And so, so that's why they go and do the fight again, right? And yep. so, um, and then you find out later, you find out in Creed 1 that he beat Rocky in that third fight. Yeah, and did you so, like that? That's a it's an important point. I did, and here's why, right? Because the third fight clearly wasn't a real fight. It was a sparring, it was a sparring match, right? <laughs> it's not a real fight, but but yeah, I mean, because at that point, you, I could envision. This is just me in my head looking at Rocky. I can envision that that fight for Apollo Creed was serious. He had something to prove. Rocky didn't really care. <laughs> it was, it, you know what I mean? It was like, Rocky's like, really? We're going to do this? You know what I mean? That's playing his friend, and, yeah, yeah. And Apollo was like, yes, we're going to do this, and I'm going to beat you. You know what I mean? Like, he just had to, he had to get it back. You know what I mean? And so okay. I could see why Apollo would win that. I but, can see. I'm not, my, my contest, contest station, station wasn't that, that Apollo won. It's that they revealed it. I didn't like that. I, I liked oh. it being a mystery. I liked it, and I agree with you. I, I can see that exact scenario. You're right. I, I never thought about it like that, but you're right. I think it was just a sparring match because when the first time I watched through the series, I was like, wait a minute, they went home bloody, broken ribs and everything when those two clashed or clashed or collided. 
And did they really do that? Did they all end up in the hospital wheelchairs for like the next like six months? No, because, he, because after, Rocky, you know, Rocky Four comes back. He drives home. He's he a black guy. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> so it's not really friend. that. It's not really that bad. The the other thing I like about Rocky too, and what you brought up, and I think it's an important point, is that so you have the scene where you you said he looks over at Rocky and he's so fixated on Rocky, and I think in that moment. Apollo Creed is looking at him and realizing he can't beat him. Like Rocky is going to get up. You know what I mean? And it's just, it was just too much. Apollo's like, I can't, can't do it. And just, yeah. and he, he's finally defeated. Like Apollo Creed is defeated. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, and Rocky just purely won on will because clearly Apollo Creed was the more skillful fight. I yeah. mean, he beat him to death for 15, for 14 rounds in that second fight. Yeah. I mean, really he just, if you watch the fights, he got he beat him mercilessly mercifully mercifully mercilessly mercilessly in that second fight yeah. you know what i mean and just um he just his own pride beat him yeah so i so, like uh, the, the opening scene in the hospital those scenes before all the mail started coming in all the the persecution to creed rocky wheelchairs into his room and they were already they were trying to start a fight right there in the when they first got to the er and paulo mm -hmm. was ready to get up and continue the fight but by yeah. the time they calmed down press was out of the way and then rocky quietly you know eases into his room in the middle of the night and says paulo you, you just need to know did you give me your best and he's like yeah you know i was like wow how was it oh it's just me rocky listen could you answer me one question yeah sure did you give me your best I don't necessarily like, right? And, and uh, I know what you're about to say. Go ahead. Well, at the end of the of the first fight, he's he's sitting there and he's like, Apollo is saying, you can clearly see that they were not planning on making a second rock. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he because he goes in there, he says, there ain't gonna be no rematch. Yeah. And he's like, I don't want one. There ain't gonna be no rematch. There ain't gonna be no rematch. Don't want one. First thing you see first is Apollo thing. he comes out and he's like, let's finish this fight. I want a rematch. Look, nobody goes the distance with me. Get up out of that chair, Chubb, and let's finish this fight right now. Oh, don't please. Look, I'm Is he serious? EMT were saying, man, you really suck tonight. Yeah, <laughs> so you got to what? You really did. By the time we got to the car, he's like, yeah, let's that finish be, this. That would be great if there was like a lost scene where they, they, he's in there and the EMTs are just talking to each other and being like, <laughs> I think Rocky actually won that fight. You know I mean? like, <laughs> something like that. that, that was just, paper champion. That just flip Apollo's lid. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> but but no, you're right. Like that's another thing that's great about Rocky too is that whole scene at the beginning when they're in the hospital when he's getting bandaged up and he's like, oh, I feel like I'm on top of the world, even though he looks mangled. Yeah. He's like, you know, I, I did it. I gave you know, I took him and took his best, and then um, and then you know that whole scene where he walks into Apollo's room and all those things it's just it was really it was it's a really great movie I, I i i wonder even now because i we've had this conversation before and i've tried to watch it more and i still feel like it's it's the least rewatchable of them for me i don't that's because it slows down it's so slow and i think the first one's incredibly slow but this is like the stuff about trying to get a job and maintain a job and the stuff with the pregnancy and all that stuff it just it's just kind of like comes well it's really hard to cut through that first that middle third right there and then you have all the yeah. commercials and stuff and everyone has these bad this bad taste about who rocky is and no one gives him respect and everything it's just you don't like seeing him like that and it's just it's just uh you know kind of kind of uh you don't you don't like seeing him like that but it's an important part of it is part. it's a part of part of the story you need to see it so that he can so that you can see like what he's learning too. Like he, I even, I even love that scene when he's talking to Mickey the first time afterwards and asking if he can train again. And he's like, he just says, "I just need to be around it." Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Like, he wants to go help I, in the gym. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I've, I've felt that a little bit. You know, like I, I had that stint when I was doing wrestling, and I've done some wrestling and promoting and stuff, and I've since kind of pulled back from it. But every once in a while, you just need to get a taste of it because it's just something that's in your blood. It's not the same as a boxer, I'm sure. I'm not trying right. to say it is, but. But I can see that when it's something that has become kind of a part of you, you just kind of have to be around yeah. it. You know what I mean? And and that's why he just, it's almost that same struggle that Apollo has when he retires, right? Is he's just like, what do I do with myself now? 
you and know, that's the and, point. In each in each movie, he faces retirement and coming out of retirement. And so, like, right. and Adrian's always like, "I don't, you don't need to keep. I don't want you to keep fighting." And then you have right. to have a movie with a narrative explaining why he has to keep fighting. And the first one was the first fight. The second one is that she's like, "We don't need to prove it." And then she goes into coma and comes out. But he's like, "I need to. I need to prove it." You know. Yeah. And then the third one is when he he disappoints Mick. You know, and, and lies to him on his deathbed, and then he's like, "I," and he has to go back and win it for, for himself and for for Mick. The fourth one, he wasn't gonna fight, but then it turns into kind of revenge about against Apollo Creed, and then right. the fifth one, it because they bring the fight into his own bar, into his into and beat up his and push down his friend. It's like, okay, fine, we're gonna fight. You know what I mean? So I yeah. think that that whole narrative, the second one, that's really slow and hard to get through, is all building up for that transition for his motive to fight again. Yeah, no, they all have that. True. It's true. So, all right. So now we're on to my next one. We've You're four. We've just visually reviewed two. Okay. So now this is where I have the hardest time. Okay. Because I really, it's like neck and neck for me for these next two. Okay. Um, and I decided I was going to put the next one as Rocky three. Okay. Now, the thing that's hard about it is Rocky Three is the movie that got me hooked on Rocky movies. Like, this is the one I remember from my childhood watching the most. Right. Mainly because the villains are so cartoony. I mean, like, Mr. T is fantastic. It, I mean, at the time, I couldn't think of a more scary villain than, Ro than Mr. T. He was so much bigger than Rocky. You know what I mean? He was just so scary looking. And then he also fights Hulk Hogan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in the movie. And so... Um, and it's entertaining, but I think that the the um, the stakes in Rocky Three are the least of all of them. Because the least stakes, okay? Yeah, the reason because is Rocky in Rocky Three, he's already become the champion. He's already gone the distance. He's no longer a, a, a punk in the neighborhood. Now at this point, it's just kind of trying to prove to himself that the last few years where he was fighting wasn't all fake, right? Because he finds out in Rocky Three that all the fights after Apollo Creed that Mickey was protecting him by setting up fights that he knew he could win. He was not fighting the best fighters. He was fighting the ones that, that he knew. Or in their prime. They even mentioned that. It was like, yeah. they kind of been yeah. around a well. while. Yeah. yeah, right. They're, they were hand-picked has basically. Right? And so, um, so I, I don't know if I really felt that. Also, I know that, like, some Rocky fans love the Rocky Three scene between him and Adrian on the beach. I just don't really that much. I mean... I'm afraid, all right? Like, okay, you're afraid. Like, that was a little much there, so it's sly. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just felt like it was a little too much, and uh, Adrian fighting back like that was just a little too much, especially considering in the first two movies, and even in the fourth movie, she doesn't fight that much, you know? So, in which one? Uh, in Rocky 1 and 2, she's very timid, right? In Rocky 3, she's become kind of like this you know, this woman who is really speaking her mind a bit. And then in Rocky Four, she does, but it's not as much as in Rocky Three. You know what I mean? Um, uh, in Rocky Five, she does too, I guess. I guess maybe that's just part of her progression as a character. But I just, I don't know. It, I didn't like that one as much. Okay. Um, although I did like the scene where, you know, he's the leading up to that little, little, uh, monologue or whatever you would call it uh that scene where rocky and apollo are running on the beach and rocky gives up i think that's an important part of his story arc in that movie and i thought that that was well played so i don't know i'm sure you have a different opinion because i know you like rocky three a lot so tell me what your opinion is on that monologue while i get up for three seconds good <laughs> I I don't want to talk about the monologue because you know darn well how I feel about that monologue because one of the uh, um, one of the pinnacle moments of our becoming friends was when I gave a talk on our mission about the Rocky series and I got one through three and the buildup was for that speech on the beach um, was the climax of my my twenty five minute talk and. Um, the whole thing is which was an amazing talk by the way <laughs> i wish i seriously wish that everyone could hear that because <laughs> and I, I don't think you could even i i doubt you could even recreate it because okay. because the way you got into once. that when you got into that i remember thinking because when you first started i was like this is ridiculous he's gonna 
I was like, yeah, you know, and I knew you were ridiculous already, but I was like, this is just over the top. But then by the end, everyone was like, yeah, Rocky. <laughs> You know, and I love also that like someone spouted out some, I remember like Gregson or somebody spouted out something from Rocky Four. You're like, no, 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 no. That's from this scene over here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Rocky Three. And like you were, right. getting, you were getting like teary eyed over it. I was like, oh my gosh. Really into it. <laughs> I forgot about that. You're right. Yeah, that was awesome. Anyway. Uh, yeah, you're right. And I thought about it. I, I want to find someone that kept a really accurate uh, journal to find out what the week or what the, the, uh, the assignment was to speak on. And I could probably find out what the topic kind of was. I might be able to think of maybe some of the points I would have made, but yeah, I, I didn't write I down a 25 minute talk. I was. I, just, I, I honestly, I honestly don't even. Even if you could, I would not want you to try to recreate it no. because in my mind it was just it so was like time, so on point. Yeah. And might I also add that that zone meeting that we or it wasn't a zone meeting, it was president the president interviews. Yeah, it was the talks that we did before we we were oh, getting the president, president one by one. Yeah, I remember that was a really strong meeting just in yeah. general. It was. So I remember that was a, a good. We had a lot of good uh, experiences in that zone, and that was one of them. So okay. anyway, well, let me. Here's the, here's my own. I'll, I'll say this about that speech. When uh, you just mentioned that Paulo, they're racing down the beach and they're running down. He's like, and it is. Oh gosh, it's, it's just so good, Josh. You're such an idiot. Okay, Paulo says he's saying he's teaching him all this stuff. He's like, you need to go back to the basics. You got to go back and start from the beginning because back when you were hungry and everything, you got to relearn things. And it's like. And what, as they're lining up on the beach, as, after he's already been kind of sucking at everything Paulo has been having him do, they line up for, before they start running, and he's like, yo, Mick never had me do this. And, and then Paulo, one of his best moments, he didn't be like, well, maybe it's time for another lesson. He didn't say anything like that. He was like, yeah. Because he didn't want to step all over him still mourning. You know, he was really sensitive yeah. about that, which is a very big deal for Paulo, because he's all mouth, you know that. All right, you never had me do this. Yeah. Okay, here we go. But where he's like, you know, Mick never had me do anything like this. He could have easily gone off on him, you know? Yeah. But he was like, yeah. Anyway, so let's run. So they run and then they fail and they cut to the end and, and it cuts to rock and he's looking off into the into the beach and then you see um, Paulo and he's, he stops, comes back and says, what's wrong with you? And Matt, and then and Paulo is like, what's what's going on? What's wrong? And, they, and Paulo's like, it's over. And he turns. Yeah one split second glance at Adrian and he turns off and walks off. Then the camera comes in and stops on Adrian and Adrian is sitting there and it's like, you've never seen her before. And you're absolutely right. In the first movie, she was so shy and timid and just so scared of everything. And so protected by Polly. Polly's right that he did kind of take care of her and then she kind of stepped out, moved in with Rock. Yeah, but he's also part of the reason why she was so timid because- Yeah, 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 yeah. suppression for sure. He's, he's an alcoholic, yeah. yeah. The second movie, she stood up, but very shyly, but she was like just taking care of the baby or, you know, the pregnancy and stuff, trying to work and be independent. But she wasn't like forbidding him from doing anything. He was just not doing the fight and everything because he wouldn't, wouldn't take care of her. And then when she went went into the coma, Rocky was like, forget everything. This is what's most important. And then she comes out very quietly says, I want you to win. She had this little revelation during her coma and said, I want you to win. But she wasn't outspoken. She wasn't. She she was she would make a stance and she would say her her thoughts about everything. But and even up until the first half of three, she was going in and she was like, "We don't need this." And and Rock's like, "I need this." Even when they're getting ready to leave and he's saying goodbye to the kid and stuff, he's like, he's like, "I I need to do this. I need it for me." And she's like, eh, "Okay." But after that second on the beach, she's just sitting there quietly while he's failing at his training. And then he runs down the, the beach, stops halfway, and Paulo and she hears to Paulo Paulo say, "It's over." or is finished and he walks off. She steps up, focus right in camera and then it cuts to her walking to him. That is the emerging of the of a new Adrian that she was consistent with the entire time. And you're talking about the prog progression of Rocky. Rocky started, you know, he was a bum on the streets. He was, he was a, a muscle for a loan shark and everything. And he transitioned into this champion of more than just the mat of the ring, you know? And you watch that progress slowly but Adrian also went on an arc, and you said you just you just you just uh, mentioned that, but that this is her arc. She went from being quiet and shy, or shy to being an advocate towards the end. And the second, or in the fifth one, in the fourth one, we know she was strong-minded, and she was like, "You don't need to win." And and it wasn't until she went to Russia to support him that he was all in. You know, mm -hmm. if she didn't show up in Russia, I wonder how that fight would have turned out. But mm -hmm. by the th fifth one, when he's neglecting her son, their son. 
you know, she's the one that's like, you need to, this is your, where your tension should be. She was, she was vocal that she never was before, but that scene on the beach was the first time that she was forced because she cared about him so much and she knew he wasn't going to survive and he was going to, he was going to, she saw, because she's so wise, Adrian, she saw that their future was going to be horrible because of what he was going through right now. If she, if he didn't face his fear, if she didn't get the truth out of him and she confronted him and he got, she, she came out and it was like, she, he'd never seen her before. He's like, when'd you get so tough? And she's like, I live with a fighter. Uh, awful line. It's but, so <laughs> There's That's what I'm saying. Line, like it's line, just line. the line is so bad, and and I I agree with you, right? Like I agree with you on Rocky on on the Rocky three because it is. I'm not saying that the the stakes weren't high. I, I know you're not. I know. Yeah. yeah, we're not talking about the stakes right here, but just saying that sequence though, when she comes out, I didn't feel like she was out of character. I felt like this was her finally. She was coming out, and I was like, this is a big deal. You know. I think I think I agree with you too. Is the difference there is in all the other movies, Rocky is the one pushing the fight. And yes. in Rocky three, he is defeated mentally. Yes. And she yeah. is the one who's trying to say like, cause I think she, she even says in the monologue, she goes, if you, if you want it to be over and it's over, I'm glad. Like I, I want it to be over. Yeah. But if you're doing it because you're, you know, if, you know I want the truth. What is the truth? And then he's like, I'm afraid. All right. I'm afraid. And I'm like, Oh gosh, you're such a, but that wasn't the full truth. That was the third. No, that was the final truth. You're right. You're right. But 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 the thing is, is that you know she. That was when she was like, oh, okay, you know, well, if you know, you're gonna live with what if for the rest of our lives, and I don't want that. You know, right. and so and that's the so point. I, I get that. But I feel like the delivery was a little cheesy. <laughs> I live with a fighter. Yeah, yeah that you know, part was like, dumb. I didn't like that line. So I didn't really like that. And um and I and, and the the the. I like the training sequence in this one with uh, with Apollo, because really Rocky is for the first time. Like Mick was good at training brawlers, like Rocky Marciano, like guys who are not skilled fighters, right. but are just they go in and they brawl. Rocky for the first time was becoming a complete boxer. He actually had to learn how to box. He had to jab. Yes, and, yeah. You know, do these Movement, things, footwork, all that stuff, and, and that's why he ultimately beats Mr. T or Club Lang, Clubber Lang because uh, because now he's a complete fighter and he's a completely different fighter, right? What I don't understand, and I, I'm trying to think about this, I don't know, I, I haven't really paid attention to it, but does he go back to Southpaw in Part Three, or does he still keep fighting right-handed? Well, I don't think it matters because they mentioned when they're in, when they're announcing Clubber Lang that he's also a southpaw, so he doesn't need to. Ah, uh, okay, so they were both fighting left hand. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. The reason I bring it up is because in Rocky One, I think he goes back to southpaw, but in Rocky One he was a southpaw, and then Rocky Two he started fighting right-handed to kind of throw yeah. Apollo Creed off. Yeah, to be a switch. He said, yeah. "Don't go to your or you have a hand until I tell you." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so. Uh, that's really interesting. But anyway, yeah, so I like that. And I do like the fact that uh, that uh, Rocky lost the fight in, in the first fight with Mr. T. You know, that was important, you know, to have him actually lose yeah. and lose badly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a great it's it's a great movie. It's my it's the one that got me on the Rocky series. And I, you know, I loved those fights when I was a kid. Um, I don't like the way it begins with. Polly finding the Rocky pinball machine and breaking it with being drunk and breaking <laughs> Thanks for asking that. It. That is the one to... weakness of that movie is like, you're like, you have this long drama in the first one, all the stupid character crap with Polly. And then the second one, you have this this pacing stuff with uh, with Adrian and him getting a job and everything. And then a little more with Polly. The third one, like you have this awesome, exciting montage of him maintaining the the belt and all that stuff. And then before we get to the Thunderlips, hang on, pause the movie. Polly has to have a freaking meltdown and get arrested, and right. <laughs> Rocky has to talk him out of it and give him a job in the parking lot. It's like, come on, dude. This is like, I was like five, seven, ten minutes of like, wh why are we here? You know. Although I do like in Rocky, I love one thing I love about the Rocky movies is that they always like seem to weave in little details from the other movies. So, like for example, in Rocky Two, 
when Rocky makes all the money and then he blows it all, which is, which is so like perfect because that's that's exactly what somebody who's never had money would do, right? They finally get a little bit of money, so then they go and they blow it all, right? And so there's a part where he goes in and he buys himself a nice or he buys a nice watch for uh, for Adrian, and then he's like, hey, we're gonna get one for Paulie too, right? Yeah. And then he buys one for himself. Well, then in in three, oh. oh look, you gave me a lousy watch, this, and he throws it on the ground. And I never goes, caught that. I thought yeah, it was it, taken off screen. You're right. I never yeah, caught it so, it so he throws watch. it, but, but yeah. my favorite part of that, my favorite line, is when he goes to pick it up, and he's like, no, nah, leave it down. It never gave <laughs> a good time anyway. You know, like, I love that. Oh, the man. message of that scene is all the whole friends don't know you owe yourself. That's yeah. the point of that. has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. It's a good little mess or message and everything, but like, it, it it the whole thing could have been cut out it didn't add to anything so, but anyway so yeah it didn't it didn't really add to it but i love that little that little piece that he throws down the watch yeah that he got the little Easter egg. so that was really interesting and um and i love i love just the wrestling fan of me loves hulk hogan because that actually a little spin off <laughs> from that if it wasn't for that movie i don't think hulk hogan would have ever become hulk hogan because he was not he was not Hulkamania Hulk Hogan at that time. He had just he was just a wrestler. He was a bad guy wrestler in New York. In fact, he went to Vince McMahon Jr. This is a little side story. Vince McMahon Jr., who owns WWE now, his father owned WWF in New York. It was a territory at the time. So Hulk Hogan goes to him and says, hey, they want me to do this movie. And Vince Sr. says, well, you're not an actor. You're a wrestler, so you stay here with me. He's like, well, if that's the case, then I'm going to bail. You know, and he left. And he goes and does the movie and then he goes to minnesota with awa and then later vince jr buys it and brings him over and makes him hulk hogan what he is now right like what he became so that would have never happened because vince jr was very much into like the tie-ins with trying to make it more pop culture i don't think hulk hogan would have become hulk hogan if he didn't do the movie that's and really so, interesting that's yeah, right. and so, in fact, when Hulk Hogan was inducted into the Hall of Fame, and by the way, I'd like to say I was there at the Hall of Fame when he was inducted, Sylvester Stallone is the one who inducted him into the Hall of Fame. So, very oh, interesting, cool. in L.A. So, I was there in the presence, the only time I've ever been in the presence of Sylvester Stallone live, and he was inducting Hulk Hogan into the Hall of Fame, so that was kind of a bucket list. So, very exciting nice. about that. Uh, okay, so now we can go on to my next one. Sure. Okay, my next one is Rocky IV. And Rocky IV, I think, now let me just say, this is an experience from my childhood that will always be with me. <clears throat> my, my dad took me out of school early so we could go see the first showing of Rocky IV. And I said earlier that Rocky V, it was like a, it was like a going to a real boxing match. Right. Rocky IV was insane. Like it was absolutely insane in there. Everybody was pumped the whole time. Right. The whole crowd. When he knocked out, out Ivan Drago, this, like everybody stood up and cheered. It was huge, you know? So uh, I love the movie. I think the stakes are great. One of the like most painful deaths in cinematic history for me was Apollo Creed being murdered in the ring. When that happened, like I was just like, oh my gosh. I think I was, how old was I, like eight? <laughs> I was like eight years old and I was like, oh my goodness, what was I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Apollo Creed's dead. He killed him, you know? And he didn't even get arrested. What's going on, you know? And so, <laughs> um, yeah. And so uh, that whole thing, and I love, I love, it's so 80s montage, like that whole scene where he, he has, I love that scene between him and Adrian when he comes back to the press conference. And that's the thing I love about this movie is how it's all about revenge for rocky you know what i mean like if you if you know the movie he goes in there and they're gonna do it on christmas he's gonna do it in russia and he's gonna do it for money or for no money no money he's going in for no money to go fight him i mean he wanted the fight so bad that he did he put it in the absolute best terms for ivan drago just to get him in the ring he didn't care yeah, what but he that was partly him training in russia was more so he could get away from all the media and stuff i gotta leave this place so where are you going they said they were gonna let me train in russia i just want to go someplace where i ain't gonna think about nothing except him 
No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the terms of I mean, oh, the fight actually that, being there for yeah, you. It was like I'm afraid for my husband's safety. Yeah. yeah. See, the thing is, though, is like usually in boxing, the the champion calls all the shots. You know, what I mean, he's the one who decides where everything is. Mm -hmm. And Rocky was like, I will go to Russia. I will fight him in front of the of the entire Russian government, and I will do it for no money. And he he forfeited. If you read the paper, he forfeited the championship to go and fight him because they wouldn't sanction the fight, right? And so he went and he, he gave up his belt. He did it for no money. He fought on Christmas day in Russia. I mean, like that's intense. Yeah. And so then of course, Adrian knows nothing about any of this. Like he didn't even tell her about it. I don't know how that's possible, but he like never told her about it. Cause she, she gets out of the car and she just sees all the press there. Well, I mean, it happened like, in that think? afternoon is what it seemed like. It seemed like- Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Know, like she didn't know anything about any of the terms or anything. And then he comes back and then they have that fight where she's like, you can't win. Like this is the first time yeah. where he doesn't believe. And and I love the line when he looks at her and he says, uh, "What do you, how does he exactly Cause I'm a fighter. It? Why can't you change your thinking? Everybody else does. Cause I'm a fighter. That's the way I'm made, Adrian. That's what you marry. We can't change what we are. Yeah, not that, but the the one where he says, um, to beat me, he's oh. going to have to kill me. And if, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he's going to be willing to kill me. If he's to get me. in the ring with me, he also has to be willing to die. Yeah. No, maybe I can't win. Maybe the only thing I can do is just take everything he's got. But to beat me, he's going to have to kill me. And to kill me, he's going to have to have the heart to stand in front of me. Do that. He's got to be willing to die himself. That's yeah, it. exactly. And yeah. so it's like, oh, it's on. And then, of course, my favorite, my, my favorite, like, use of '80s music is "No Easy Way Out" when he's driving around, and they, like they just do all these great montages from the first three movies where he's just thinking about like Mickey being dead and Apollo being dead and like all of the crap, and he's just like ready to go. Ah, so great. I love it. And you know what? What? How come not all of us have giant robots like Polly had in the in the night in like early night eighty nine ninety? Like how come? Sex robot. Yeah. Like what's the deal? How come we don't have robots like that? That robot was awesome. I was like, we're all gonna have robots now. This is awesome. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, Polly. Ugh. Yeah, and then on top of that, so yeah, and then what happens? This is not a coincidence. Right after that movie comes out, what happens? The the Berlin Wall comes down. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, you know what? I I'm just I'm giving credit to Ronald Reagan, Sylvester Stallone, because he single handedly yeah. with Ronald Reagan always help. makes that joke that like yeah, Rocky personally defeated <laughs> Russia and Brenda. Yeah, Rocky Rocky killed communism. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I, like I have I have met people recently many many who have told me they have not seen rocky and i'm like how are you even an american citizen i'm pretty sure rocky four is on the citizenship exam and if it's not when i become president i'm putting it on there right after i pass the executive order changing the official shape of the reese's cup to egg so yeah. all right any other thoughts on rocky four uh no it's just i i think it's to me i also think that probably of all the movies though that is the one i watch the most yeah but I don't think it's the best Rocky movie. It's the best, no, it's not the best Rocky movie. It's not the best film in the Rocky franchise. From We already know how I feel about the fight. Rocky II has the best fight, but this one is the, is, I mean, I, okay, here's what I'll say. Rocky I is the best film. Rocky II's fight is the best filmed fight, but the fight in the, in the ring on Rocky IV is like the coolest one to watch. I think even above yeah. six, everyone praises six, but him fighting draw the way they do the slow motion stuff, the freeze frame spit and all that kind of stuff The you can see exactly what's going on. The audience reactions changing completely people, the cheering, they start cheering for him and everything. The commentating on that one as well. Everything you can see how they're perfectly polished. I mean, there's no two, you know, when you have two, I mean, look at, I mean, it's freaking, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. 
he's a he's a, a specimen like if there was like the terminator for real like that's what humans would make the terminator if we wanted a perfect physical physique body he was perfect such hair. a beast yeah he, he was like, such a beast tall. i mean yeah there's arnold but like he arnold look is a little ridiculous looking if you want to have a the perfect specimen of a human like, yeah like an athletic what human look like you know yeah. and rocky yeah. this was like i feel like this is the peak of stallone's body and all this stuff that yeah it's whatever but like this is when he was most perfectly cut in his entire career you put the two of them in the ring and you go from them being polished and shiny and beautiful to the way they look at the end of the fight especially with drago because he has the black mat or the black uh, tooth guard oh, yeah. and then when and the whole thing with drago is he gets cut in the eye and that's where he keeps going for that eye so that blood is just coming down as they progress the fight and everyone all the all the villains have a different weakness that rocky has to chime in on or hone in on but uh, that blood down his face and then rocky's just his hair and his sweat and everything like the more sweaty and glistening um drago gets the more beautiful he looks the more <laughs> sweaty and glistening rocky gets it's just his hair is all over the place you know so you but, know that's like, the thing it's just such a cool fight to watch for that stuff and then the very end and the attitude the speech right at the end with drago where he's like hey fight for me fight me that speech only in russian yeah. like you're like, this is serious. And when he sits down and he, what's the line? He says, he's like a piece of steel or whatever he says. He's a piece of iron, yeah. Yeah, it's like, he's never hit. With all the poundage that they're that they're measuring with him, he's never hit anything that feels like Rocky. He's like, this is different. And Rocky, and the whole thing, when he cuts him, he's like, you see, he's not a machine, he's a man. And Duke's like, get yeah. him. You're like, dude, he could win. And then he's yeah. just throwing so, him on the ground and stuff. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So, so I was gonna say, I think what really makes that mo that fight so great is Duke, like in, uh -huh. in the in oh, the yes. corner. Go ahead. Yeah, because Duke in the corner is so good, and, and he starts being good when they first get to Russia when he has that little monologue uh -huh. and he's talking to Rocky about how like you know I kn and he even says he's like look most of this training you're gonna have to, you already know what to do I'm not gonna have to train you much but you know this is this is about you know pride this is about all these things and then when they're in there and he's like. You know the little scene where he goes, uh, "What what's going on?" He's like, "He's winning." I see three of them out there, and he's like, "Hit the one in the middle." The yeah, middle. actually, Polly says it first. And then, yeah, Polly says it first, and then, and then Duke's like, "You're right, right." Hit the one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. like. All right, what's happening out there? He's winning. I see three of them out there. Get the one in the middle. Right. Hit the one in the middle. Yeah. yeah. And the whole and then, no pain, the no pain, yeah. no pain. Yeah, the no that's pain, and then also physical. that's his yeah. emotions too. And then at the very end, when it's the last round, it's like one more round, all your strength, all your power, all your love. Right here, baby. Yeah. yeah, this is it. This is it. You know, like that's so so this is good. Your whole and, life, he you know, says. This is your whole yeah. life right here. Yeah, and also not only that, but man, like they did such a good job of that movie making Dolph Lundgren look like the ultimate fighter like that whole thing where he's punching and they announce they're like the normal fighter hits with 650 pounds of pressure and then he hits and it's like 1850 pounds of pressure you know what i mean it's right. like you know all of that and then also you see that he's on steroids you yeah. know and all these different things and man like that just it was so intense and also i want to say that i thought that the premise of rocky five going back to what i think is the worst of the franchise but still rocky five um the idea of Rocky having brain damage after that fight makes so much sense because he got hit so hard so many times. In the and montage at the beginning of five, really emphasized. You saw every hit just so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and on top of that, also, I mean, even the thing at the at, where he's shaking after the fight, like he's oh, like, the shower? Feels like, yeah, where he's talking oh, talking to Adrian. Yeah, yeah, and he's talking to Adrian. He's like, remember what Mickey used to say? Like, it broke something inside. You know, like. Yeah. It was like, oh man, he's like, he's jacked up. You know yeah. what I mean? And and, and it only makes sense, right? Because because nobody nobody in their right mind could take all the beatings that you even saw him take. Let yeah. alone he had like sixty fights before those fights. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way that he could come out of there not a little. I mean, it makes sense why he sounds so loopy. You know, because he just he's so punch drunk from getting beat up like that. But but anyway, yeah. I mean that that fight. I love that fight so much because it just it's intense and i just remember being in that theater and everybody for every punch it was like everyone was going crazy the whole time I've, i can imagine that and yeah, i used it to, was 
in high school, I, when I would work out in my bedroom, I would work, I'd lift weights and stuff watching the, the train, because that one has the greatest training montage of all time, Rocky Ford. Oh yeah, we didn't oh yeah, that's a great that. training montage. That's like a CrossFit style uh, uh, training montage. Right, yeah. and it's a, yeah. kind of really cool how they, and they do a really good job. I was saying, as I was saying about Rocky Three, they, in Rocky Three, it's really cool how they show how serious and gritty Clever Lang is. While Rocky is like, you know, just doing for the press, he's dressed up all weird music and, and orchestras and stuff playing. He's like not doing anything for real. But the way they contrast that really shows the result of what's going on and what they're really, what they're like. Yeah. And Rocky Four is doing the same thing, but you're seeing how artificial or, um, Drago is versus how natural um, Rocky is. And it's not like which one's better, but it's just, it's just kind of an, a cool thing that they're showing the difference. And then the coolest part about it is that the last part is when they're, Correlating the two of them on their running exercise or the climb the mountain, it shows uh, Drago on the little on the whatever that thing's called with the little stairs that go up and down under his under his feet. Yeah, it's While true. Rocky's yeah. climbing up, you know this is the magic of cinematography. You cut after Drago, you show him, <gasps> and he's like dead and tired, and he has to stop. And then it cuts to Rocky finishing more running, and then he gets to the top, goes Drago. Now who's to say who actually worked out harder? <laughs> because there's no correlation, you know, yeah. you can't compare them, but like cinema or you know for filmmaking perspective that montage is so cool when you're seeing the transition between them and then and then that triumph at the, at the top with drago in the middle where he pulls down the the photo of drago because he's like he's trying to focus that uh -uh, i mean i don't kind of be distracted or, or think about that stuff but like right. everything and then cuts in the middle with adrian coming in and she's on board and then it cuts to the more positive stuff and yeah. one of the most incredible things that I can think of as far as a human physical specimen doing something is when he's lifting the cart and it keeps oh, all the people on it gets to him and just everything's just bulging out of him and it's yeah. like that's like the one of the most insane that like you said CrossFit where he's lifting all them in the cart in the ox cart or whatever and it, he's just like that's the most like blood <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You know, you know what impresses me. You know what impresses me the most out of all of that is that when he's doing those sit-ups off of the off of the balcony. I'm oh like, yeah, yeah! Oh my gosh! I mean, I look. I don't know. I I work out. I work out six days a week, and I could never. I don't think I even now. I now work out my abs two three times a week, and I could never. I don't think I could ever do that. I mean, I'm Where looking at that. The bench behind his head is lowering his entire body down like that. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when he's he's hanging off the balcony and someone's holding his feet and he's like doing sit ups up from a oh, balcony. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I'm going, oh, but that too. I don't think I could do that either. Like I'm just I'm looking at it and I'm like, holy cow, like that is insane. And, and then dude starts chopping at him as he comes down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, is that like. That is actually Sylvester Stallone doing that. I mean, yes. that is that, what a <laughs> what a monster. You know what I mean? Like that's crazy. So interesting um, thing about uh, Rocky Three. I wanted to throw this out there. So one thing I like about the Rocky Three montage is because the most iconic sound in my my side is, or my opinion, one of the most iconic soundtrack songs is "I Have the Tiger" associated with Rocky Three. And so Rocky Three montage has Eye of the Tiger in it. It has it at the beginning. And it actually has it at the beginning of Rocky Four too. So Eye of the Tiger is is in all of these movies, right? Um, interesting little side piece for people who aren't big Rocky nerds like me and Tim to some lesser extent. Uh, <laughs> so- Are you his brother? Huh? Are you no, 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 no. This is, this is something interesting is that yeah, originally Another movie that I love that has an iconic soundtrack is the montage for the Karate Kid fight scene with the song You're the Best Around, right? Originally, Rocky III was slated to have You're the Best Around as the montage for those fights. And later, uh, I believe it was Sylvester Stallone who said, no, this does not fit Rocky. And then they picked Eye of the Tiger and it became iconic for the Karate Kid. And in my mind, as as somebody who think I think I would probably say the Karate Kid uh, trilogy because the next Karate Kid was, and so was the abortion of the remake. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, Rocky, that soundtrack is synonymous with Karate Kid, mm -hmm. and I think it was perfect for that. 
Yeah. And I think Eye of the Tiger was perfect for Rocky. So it's interesting how uh, how that all kind of works. Well, the, the whole concepts, they work in both. The Eye of the Tiger is they're, they're, that's all in the dialogue. They wrote that into it, like that whole eye, the edge that he that he yeah. have mm -hmm. and Paulo teaches him how to get again. Whereas uh, You're the Best Around is kind of like a, it's almost like it's like a high school popularity kind of a vibe, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. Don't let everyone get you. I'm not, I'm not trying to do lyrics, but you know, everyone's been picking on this kid. He feels like he's like nothing. He just wants to go back home where he knows the rules. Let's not get the credit kid. But like, he's like, that's the whole thing about that movie is he's trying to come up, kind of get an identity in that movie. Well, get for sure. And I even, I even think if you watch the montage and the, and the kicks and the fighting and stuff, it's almost like the rhythm of the music plays really well with oh, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas I mean, that, I, right? the tiger works really well with just general training and boxing. You know what I mean? And and I think that both of these movies, I think to the to the extent really more for me, uh Karate Kid 2, the score is fantastic for all the scenes in Oklahoma. Well, they're all Bill Conti, even Rocky. And yeah, Rocky but Kid. Bill Conti to me is one of the best composers of scores ever. I mean, I, those movies, those movies would not be anywhere near as iconic if it wasn't nope. for the movie. Correct. And so uh so good. Um anyway, okay, so now moving on to my number two which yep. is Rocky Balboa. Oh, that's, yeah. Uh, Rocky Balboa is so good because Rocky and Rocky is a pathetic char character. You're sp he's endearing because he's so pathetic and he's, but the thing is, is despite the fact that he has no real skills, he is able to use hard work, determination, and just a general heart and fire to make the best of every opportunity he gets. And so he doesn't get a lot of opportunity, but when he gets it, he makes the most of it, right? And uh, Rocky Balboa is there. It's so good because you can see, that's like a, a the story of how he was handling what Apollo Creed was trying to figure out in Rocky IV, right? Like he's, he just realizes as he gets older. He says he says when he's talking to the uh, to the uh, what do you call him the um, the boxing commission for for Pennsylvania. He's like the older I get, the more I have to realize I gotta let everything go. You know what I mean? And and he just doesn't want to let go of fighting. And he's still got that stuff in the basement that he's talking about. He's still got stuff that he needs to get out. And the way he gets it out is boxing. And I love uh, you know the, Adrian's gone. And I, and I think that was such a good choice. In yeah. fact, if you listen to Sylvester Stallone, he actually said before the movie came out, he said, I actually called Talia Shire and told her I'm, I'm killing the character off because I need, I need that for him to be pathetic enough for us to get to where he's going to go. Right. And so, um, and interestingly enough, um, he didn't include he had some scenes where he was going to include some stuff for Carl Weathers and he didn't because Carl Weathers wanted too much money. And so he just, he wanted to what? Out. He wanted too much money. So, oh. so Sylvester Stallone's like, all right, well, we're just going to write you out of the story then. And so, um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I thought that he did a really, that, that was such a good job. And I think that also surprisingly, I couldn't believe this when I saw it, that monologue with his son, but I think Milo Vena, whatever you say, how you say it, playing his son did such a good job. Um, that uh, that monologue outside of the restaurant when he's when he's telling him, you know, you're not a quitter, and that it's not about how hard you hit, it's yeah. how hard you get hit and keep moving forward. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Yeah, that is the best monologue in the entire series. So, I mean, I love it. And I can tell by your face that you don't agree. I know. But, I know. It's good. Yeah, but it's really but good. I love that. I love it. I've, I've actually, anytime I feel... Like I need to get pumped up. I watch that. And that's how much of a Rocky nerd I am. I have it on YouTube and I watch it because it's just, it's so good. And it's such a good life lesson, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I love that movie. Um, and I love also, the only thing I didn't like about it is I thought Polly's, uh, Polly's little monologue 
or maybe that was actually an extended scene that I saw later that they cut out. But when he gets uh, when he gets uh, pink slipped from the meat place, you remember that from the Rocky no. Balboa? But go ahead, no. Okay, so he gets pink slipped from uh, he gets laid off from the meat place. He comes to the. I think this is actually an extended scene on the on the Blu-ray, but it's so bad. Like his his monologue is just not good. You know what I mean? Uh, he he's crying and it, and it's not good. You know, um, he's drunk and he go, he comes in and he goes, yo, so since when did they give meat instead of watches? And he's like, that's another thing. He, they re referenced the watch again in that because he comes in and he's got, he's got a big thing of meat. And they're like, what do you got there? And he's like, retirement gift or whatever. Yeah, I remember that. And, and then he goes, uh, when did they start giving meat instead of watches? He's like, I don't need a watch. You gave me a watch. And then he would take off and then he goes, I got two watches. And then he leaves. And then in the extended scene, he goes out and it, now that I think about it, it is an extended scene. He walks out and he gives this big long monologue to Sylvester Stallone about life, and it's just so poor. I'm like, I'm glad they cut it. <laughs> um, but um, but anyway, yeah, I I think that was, that movie is just absolutely fantastic. So so well done. <laughs> oh gosh, this is this is the place, guys. Everybody watching this, just get ready because I am I'm gonna start. Dude, when he starts talking about his list, I think I'm just gonna start doing push-ups and get ready to just, <laughs> like to just just jump into the screen. All right, all right, because I've been going on for a long time. I'm just gonna jump to it. It's no it's no surprise. My number one is the original Rock, and the reason it's number it is is because that movie, from a film perspective, is by far the best of all the movies. I love the story of how Sylvester Stallone used it or, or did it. I mean, he was offered money to do that movie, a lot more money to do that movie in a time when he was super, super, super poor. I mean, there's a story about how he sold his dog for $25 because he didn't have enough money for food mm -hmm. just before this. And then someone offered him a ton of money for the script to Rocky. And he said, I'm only giving it to you if I can play the lead. And they wouldn't do it. And so he left and he actually ended up taking less money from, I believe, I can't remember that it was a Wilkes, I don't remember what you call it, Wilkeshire and something, I, the group that did it, Winkler and something. Um, he took less money so he could play the lead. And uh, obviously, smart choice, right? And then he actually found, you find out, he got, he went back and he's paid, I think, $1,000. He waited in, in the laundromat where he sold his dog, waited for the guy to come back and paid him like $1,000 to get the dog back. So I thought that was, a pretty interesting uh, That's cool. to do that. But anyway, the movie is just so well done. I love the uh, all the little monologues, the little intricacies. I love the fact that you can see in his face, even though he's a lone shark, you can tell he's a good guy. You know, I love the fight the, the fight that he has with uh, Mickey, where Mickey he asks him, "I want to know why," and he goes, "Because you had a potential to be a good fighter, but you pissed it away." You know, doing his uh, second rate lone sharking. And, you know, things like that. I mean, there's, uh, and the, the little scene where he's sitting there, one of, I think it's one of the best scenes is when Mickey comes in and says, hey, you need a manager, right? Yeah. And, and he finally unloads on him. Uh, and, and he just says, you know, yeah, I needed a manager five years ago. And then he's like, you know what, it stinks. This whole place stinks. He finally, you finally see from Rocky all the pent up rage of how he's unsatisfied with his life. Yeah. That's right, it stinks! Don't come around me! Talk about your prime. I want my prime, Mick! At least you had a prime! I ain't had no prime, I ain't had nothing. Legs are going, everything is going, no one's getting no nothing. Guy comes up, offers me a fight. Big deal, wanna fight the fight? Yeah, I'll fight the big fight. I wouldn't wanna fight that big fight, it was gonna happen to me. I wanna get that! I wanna get that! You know, and he's just like, this whole place stinks, and he's like, I'm gonna get my head kicked in. And then, and then he says to himself, he's like, I'm going to get my head kicked in. And you want to be ringside and see? Do you? You want to help me out? Huh? Do you want to see me get my face kicked in? Legs ain't working. Nothing's working. They go, go on, fight the chair. Yeah, I'll fight him. My face kicked in. And then he runs, and then he runs out to go get him as a, you know, and, and I think I said in an earlier episode, if I had one question, I had Sylvester Stallone at lunch or somewhere, and I was going to ask him a question. The question I would ask would be, "What did Sylvester? What did Rocky say to Mick when he ran out and put his arm around him? What What was the conversation?" That, right. 
you know, because uh, that started. Love, the whole I thing. love again. That's a, I love that. That's a mystery. I love it. I'm yeah. so curious. But like again, if they did Creed three and Rocky told them, you know, said to the audience what the conversation was, I'm like, don't, don't do that. Just let us enjoy yeah. the mystery. But anyway, yeah. So uh, yeah, and also, I mean, uh, there are little things in that movie that are so subtle that are so important. Like a lot of people, I don't think remember this, but. The, the what sparks that monologue where he comes back and talks to uh, Adrian about just going the distance was he actually was up in the middle of the night he couldn't sleep so he gets up and he walks down to the Philadelphia Spectrum and he goes inside and he looks up at the two big posters they have one of Apollo Creed and one of Rocky and he realizes that they got the trim and the color wrong on his on his trunks and the promoter is sitting there and he says hey you got the color wrong and he goes it really doesn't matter right you're going to give them a good show and he realizes at that time that He's not a real contender and nobody really expects him to do anything. And he realizes I I'm way overmatched. I can't beat him, right? Like I just can't beat him. And it shifts from, okay, let's beat him to let's go the distance. Let's let's at least not, like we, we may not be able to win, but I'm not gonna lose. You know what huh. I mean? And, and so- um, I, never, I never put that together that that was a, a switch right there. Yeah, it was, it was really, you could see it if you wa go back and watch it and you look at his face. I know, I know exactly tell. what you're saying. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, yeah, but when you look at his face, that's the thing I love about Sylvester Stallone. I don't think he gets enough credit for being a good actor because a lot of his action movies were subpar, you know, let's just admit it. But, but like Rocky and Rambo, the original Rambo, he, his facial expressions, the way he plays it is so good. And the facial expressions he plays in the original Rocky are so good. I mean, just, uh, and he wrote the movie. I mean, he's yeah. so, such a good um, portrayal of uh, just, I mean, someone who, who was a million to one shot and just made it. And also the love story between him and Adrian in that movie. So sweet. So good. It's I mean, so innocent. They're two yeah. innocent and in their own ways, like completely ignorant, socially ignorant people. Yeah. Yeah that are just, just so perfect in their in their little world that becomes a huge world but as she always mentioned cars money all this stuff it doesn't matter it's always just about the two of them yeah like i love oh, that when he goes yeah. when he goes in there and he's like oh you know there's a hockey game going on or whatever it was or a basketball game going on down at, you know the 76ers game and he's just like well, I'll, go to, I'll go to the basketball game like kind of like slyly asks her out and she doesn't say anything you know and all that and it finally they have, they only go out because Polly basically forces her by throwing her turkey out yeah, on Thanksgiving. True. You know what I mean? Like, and so, um, and that's the other thing I like about you said you didn't like Polly. I love Polly, and the reason I love Polly is because it's so funny how Rocky, his only friend, really, like his only friend in the world, is an alcoholic abuser like like him. And also, interesting thing about, uh, and I think that this is kind of a deep cut, but like if a lot of people don't realize that Polly was like, a, he was served in the Navy. He's a military man. And, you know, I wonder if that informs his drinking, you know, because you see in the picture, you look at a picture of Polly in, in uh, on the, I don't know if it was on a nightstand or uh, where it was in the movie, but there's a picture of him and he's wearing his Navy, his Navy suit. Huh, I'm going to cut that. Yeah. So he's, um, uh, yeah, you know, that whole thing, um, just the little intricacies are so well done. It's a slow movie. Whenever I introduce Rocky to somebody, you know, and Rocky's like, all right, they're like, all right, I'll watch it. I'll go, now you have to, you have to get to one. It's the best of the movies, but understand it's slow. You're not going to get what people traditionally think of Rocky movies as like action packed boxing movies. That is not what Rocky one is or no. Rocky two. You know, so if you're looking for action, you're not going to get it. You have to be a film lover, in my opinion, to really appreciate the original Rocky. Right. So, Agreed. Yeah. That's my list. It All is right. The, it is the list, by the way, just so everybody knows. That's the definitive list, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, well here's the actual list. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Let me just say, before I start my list, Agreed. We introduced this, this uh, discussion we were going to do. I asked Josh to say, okay, do we want to look at these as Rocky movies or films? Because there's a huge difference. Because, you know, all the critics in the world could watch our favorite Rocky movies and be like, yeah, that's not a good film, except for you pick number one as the one. Number one is one of the greatest movies of all time. It's such a good film, okay? It is slow. 
if you ask uh, just regular people on the side of the street what they know about Rocky, a few things they would say is he uh, he hits the meat and he runs up the stairs and he he reaches his hands up. He, he yells, yo, Adrian, from the top of the stairs, which is completely wrong. And they would probably say he has the, the flag on his shorts, which is wrong for the first movie. But they probably couldn't tell yeah. you anything about that yeah people don't realize that those are actually apollo creed shorts right yeah. <laughs> yeah. it comes out later um those are the few things that they know and that's all from the the film stuff because i think this movie was i mean it, not think it was pretty huge when it first came out hence the success of the rest as it mm -hmm. turned into like more action schlock which it is um a lot more people that like that stuff got on board and people that like the movies got off board interesting um but uh having said that where Rocky fans are, you could talk to anyone about their favorite parts about the Rocky movies. And I think all the stuff later than Rocky one come out, except for some of the character stuff in the first one. And you mentioned the relationship with Adrian is well established. The little one-liners, the little stories, the little scenes, the little mini monologues and stuff here and there. All of that is interesting watching Rocky talking to Adrian, talking to Polly, talking to Nick, talking to the pr promoters, everything is him, even the negotiations is him learning about who he feels about himself, his background, a little bit about his his fighting style, about his history and all that stuff. Everything is like laid out to set a beautiful foundation for the franchise in the first movie. But oh my gosh, it is a hard watch. It is so slow, like you said. There's one fight in the beginning with Spider Rico, which is like really short and really choppily shown everything. You're like, this is interesting to establish the world that they're in. And then you have long periods of time before you actually get to any training. It's like 45 minutes before you get to any training. Training is so just here and there. And then um, this training is really kind of boring. And then you get to his, uh, I can't remember what leads in the real fight. The punching the meat isn't like this. The best part of that scene is watching uh, Duke watching it on TV. That's the only cool part about him punching the meat. But, well, no, I, I think because he punches the meat twice, right? He punches the meat. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll so, take that back. The first yeah. time he is, he's yelling at Polly. He's like, because Polly, yeah. yeah, you're right. And then he punches, yeah. Polly's like giving him crap, and then he starts punching the meat. And then he, he like, and, 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 and Polly's like, you're breaking the ribs. That's what, yeah. that's super yes. important. Yes. Yeah. That's super important because, because in the first movie, and the, the interesting thing about that fight in the first movie is if you, if you know the intricacies of it, in the 14th round, yeah. Rocky actually breaks Apollo right. Creed's ribs. Yeah. And Duke is concerned that he's got internal bleeding. Yeah. And Apollo Creed still wants to keep fighting in the 15th. Like Creed like uh, Duke is in the in the in the corner being like we got to call the fight. Yeah. You know, and and that's the other thing that's great about the first one is is uh, Rocky with the with the uh, the eye swollen completely shut and they're like cut me cut me back. like and and that ends up being in part two. That's his eye is permanently damaged from that, yeah. from cutting from cutting the uh, cutting that there. I mean, yeah. that's that's intense. Cut me, and then you see the blood just go. Yeah. The first time I saw that, oh. I was like, oh, you know, it's like yeah. the first time you see Rambo sewing his arm and the blood starts streaming down. Yeah, yeah. So Nowadays, good. that's like so nothing. That's like nothing so in movies cool. now. But like back then, it was like, and even still, it stands up. I watched Rambo yeah. recently, and I was like, oh. Anyway, yeah. so all that stuff said, the message, the emotion, everything he's experiencing is awesome. But that's my number. Oh, that's my number five. I'm sorry, I messed up here. That's my number five. He's already. I have a lot to say about number one. my number six. But my Rocky one is the best film. That was what I was starting with. That was, this wasn't placing the number. It's okay. the best film, but it's not my favorite. So the way I approached my list was what I love about Rocky movies and what I get out of Rocky movies and which one is my favorite. Not even my, my favorite still isn't even the one I watch the most. And like you, four is the one I watch the most. I just gave away that's not my number one. Yeah. Number six, so let's just start. Number six is Rocky Six. Oh. Rocky Balboa, stupid name, broke away from the freaking- It's his name! So his name was the same in Rocky two, three, four, and five. <laughs> okay. The movie, the premise of the movie, this movie should not have happened. The premise of the movie is just ridiculous. That, and, I, and I'll say this now, you're gonna get mad at me and I don't even care. I was so bored and didn't care about this movie and detached from this movie being a huge Rocky fan. I only saw it the one time all, well, all the way through. You I are, had no interest in going back. I you're not even a Rocky fan. So, here's, so the thing is, is Rocky Balboa, 
I agree with you that a lot of Rocky Balboa doesn't make sense. I mean, like, <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. And what I mean by that is that he's old, right? He shouldn't be fought by fighting. Correct. He had brain damage in Rocky Five. How yeah. is he all of a sudden not like he can't get a license twenty years before, but right. he can get a license suddenly? Yeah. Right. And I mean, they, and all they do is they have Larry Merchant, one of the commentators, say on in the oh well. The, Pennsylvania Athletic Commission, which was heavily criticized for giving him a license, you're like, oh, oh, they were criticized. Well, oh, well, I guess that's okay then. <laughs> it makes sense. Just, yeah, you know, it's I mean, so dumb. The only yeah, no, so, the whole when he's in the bar or the, the restaurant or whatever or whatever's going on, they're showing that CGI re, or creation of what it yeah. would be like. If, and then the primary thing, I'm like, I know this is stupid. Like, what, this well, you know that actually so happened. Terrible, huh? You know that that actually happened, not in a Rocky like with Rocky, but I think you told me that. Like, yeah. It was Muhammad Ali and someone else. I can't remember who it was. They actually did that. Yeah. This uh, it's, got it's, the idea. It's, it's dumb. Okay, that's not. This is not interesting. It's all hypothetical. Like I, don't, I mean, even for a Rocky movie, this is hypothetical within the Rocky universe, and it's stupid. The speech where he gives his son. Okay, that's kind of cool, and I like that they kind of. In, I mean, not the speech. The speech is great. The message is great. Not the best. The beach scene in on in Rocky Three is the best speech. Oh. The best monologue. But the the message is great. It's really great. It's you overused. Might wanna, like, you guys just might, everybody might want to just turn this off now. I mean, it's just, <laughs> just, just don't even care. It's overused. That quote I see all the time on memes and everything is a great Because message. it's the best one. It's good. Yeah. But it's not best because they don't appreciate or understand everything in Rocky Three, but I'll get to that. Um, there's more to what it, than what I said already, but here's the thing. It's just the whole premise is dumb. I like seeing the shadows of his life. I like seeing him in his restaurant that he just taught. He has all these pictures of, of Adrian, his fight and his career and everything. And he's talking to the customer about his record and about, and about Adrian. It's called Adrian's. I like him going out and talking to her um, by the tree. He has a little chair that he keeps in the tree for when he sits down and talks to her every day. I like that stuff. I like, um, his reminiscing. I like the stuff with the girl that just disappears out of the franchise. But I like the, the girlfriend from the first movie. The little homages, the memories he has when he goes she around. Wasn't, she wasn't a girlfriend from the first movie. She was a kid in the first movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, yeah. But he, she's kind of his girlfriend in this, and you know, she was a kid in the first one. Yeah, and that, you know, I didn't, I didn't really like her in it. And, and the reason is, is because it's like, why are you going to get rid of Adrian and then bring back another Adrian? It didn't I mean, need to be a relationship, but it was a connection. It was, it was yeah, and it, and it wasn't. Like, it's not like she was his girlfriend. It was like a, you're right, it was more of a connection than anything. Yeah. Um, but, and you know what's cool about that is his, th this way, what, what, what I liked about her was he was, he, he was an influence on her having nothing to do with his career. He felt mm -hmm. like in Rocky Five that everything, he, who he was was gone. He was nothing. He was nothing now. But one person in that movie kind of spilled this out. The one person that he changed for, you know, her life, not, not all by himself, you know, but though he was a big effect on, had a big effect on, was a girl that, that appreciated who he was as a person before all the fame happened, you know, and had not, having yeah. nothing to do with his boxing. But the like, thing wow. is, that she didn't she didn't appreciate him back then. She hated not, him. Not back then. Yeah. Get lost, creepo. That's what yeah. she called him, yeah. And that's the way that's the way people are. And there's people that you look back in your life and there's like, there's things that people have said or done or things that you, the, the outlook you had of them wasn't real or you see where, you know, trajectories in people's lives and you have more appreciation for them. And people moved you in rep in retrospect differently than they did actually back then when you how, however you received their their influence and i think that was really cool to do that and to bring her back but that's not a movie you didn't you didn't that's not those few things are not enough to make a movie because if it's a rocky movie you have to have action and they forced the stupid situation to give him a reason to fight horrible terrible dumb motives it didn't make sense there's no way they would legalize or anything having a street fight with drago or something that would have been different but no doing a, a match in the ring and leaving it open-ended where he was like walking out when he like, did not even know the victory that was cool artistically for a movie no he did no he lost i know he lost but he didn't care he was leaving yeah. he, it, it wasn't yeah. about the victory and the alternate scene of that was he won and it's just yeah. like, and that didn't, that's why it didn't even matter. They film both ways because it's so non-consequential. I liked yeah. that and it was interesting. I liked the way it was shot, but it's like, this is like a 70 year old man fighting this freaking prime boxer and his, and it's like, come on. Well, in the, in the movie, in the movie, I believe he's supposed to be either in his late forties or early fifties. He's not supposed to be in the city. Oh, okay. Then. But I still, well, it. because, because the greatest, I mean, the, the oldest fighter to ever win the championship was George Foreman and he was 44. 
So, I mean, it was possible, but you're right. I'm not saying I disagree with you, but, um, I, but I, I, liked, I liked that choice a lot. I liked that choice a lot because just like the first one, it wasn't about winning or losing. It was about just getting rid of all the stuff in the basement. You yeah. Know, that, that was, and and that, uh, that was, in my mind, great. I thought the movie was so well done. It's it's great. It was it was a, it was, a, it was more like the first one. It was a, a yeah. film the way it was. Yeah, done. but I think I mean, true, the, true film lovers and Rocky lovers love the movie. So no, I don't think Rocky lovers all love the movie. That's not true. Actually, I haven't talked to a lot of people about it. But I, I mean, I've never had the impression from it else that they didn't like it. But I didn't like it. But I'll say it. I'm going to say this: the name of the movie, changing the formula for the title to Rocky Balboa, is what fits current filmmaking trends and trying to stylize it the way the media works and the way you you don't do numbers like they used to back in the 80s and, and early 90s yeah, that no, they have, have like subtitles and taglines and stuff because that's what attracts people because you alienate people if you say rocky six and you have new audiences you're like oh i've never seen the first one so i'm not going to watch it so it's a marketing scheme to like have non or not to do numbers that the spirit of that thought right there to betray your formula for titling is exactly what happened in the movie. It's like, well, we got to force an action sequence. It doesn't have to actually make sense or anything. When the other ones, it, it was a little more believable, even for Rocky movies. But I, the whole thing was just like, I, I can't buy into it. it Wait a minute, you, you couldn't buy into the training sequence? Not in the train. Whatever, I barely remember. He was. Uh, yeah, because the whole purpose of the training sequence. All you can do is hit hard because you have arthritis and your cartilage is breaking down, so you just got to punch hard. Oh, I'm excited yeah. now. So, so all of his training was all strength training. Yeah, yeah. and he looked and he looked huge. In yeah, he looked, and I love they didn't reveal his body until he got in the ring. Mm -hmm. That was cool, but it was like. Yeah. But then they showed deleted or behind the scenes footage of him doing the actual training to get back in shape for the movie. He wasn't doing anything like. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing in the movie. Yeah. So, you know, the other thing I loved about this movie was that um, in all of the other five movies, if you watch boxing, they they didn't they weren't using boxing formula as they did back right. like in the 80s and 90s, right? Like they were making them old school. Like for example, even in Rocky 4, they were doing 15 rounds, but they hadn't been doing 15 rounds for years. They had been cut to 12. Um, you know, uh, things like that. I mean, th none of them were shot. They were kind of shot, but not exactly shot like a real boxing match. Whereas in Rocky Balboa, it was like an HBO boxing fight. They actually brought the commentators from HBO in. They had the HBO insignia everywhere. They actually shot the, the scenes for that movie before a legitimate heavyweight championship right. boxing match. So, um, I don't know, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that that was really good and well done. And uh, I loved it. The thing that was cool is, uh, what's his name? Um, Ken, Kenderman or something like that. The guy who, one of the commentators, you hear a scene where he said, I can't believe this. I'm actually going to be calling a Rocky fight. This is like a dream come true. You could tell in his voice that he was like, you know, he's a Rocky fan. You yeah. know, like yeah. Max Max Ket Kettleman or something. Is his name. He, you heard him say, like, I'm super excited about this. Like you could tell, like this was actually something cool. He gets to call a Rocky fight, you know. Yeah. Like, okay, that was, that was pretty awesome. So it's all fan service stuff. I, I get it, but it's just it's all a, a money. So, so let me also say that's what it feels I, like. I also want to say that when they said they were going to call, they were going to make Rocky Balboa. I was so worried. I was like, oh man, this is not going to be good. Like, there's no way it's going to be good. You know, it's just not. Not good. I was like, this is not going to be great. Mm -hmm. So I went in with expectations because I watched the first one because I just do that for every five, every one. Uh, and I did that for Creed, both Creed movies too. Uh, I was incredibly surprised at how good it was. So were you more worried when they announced that one or were you more worried when you, when they announced Creed and you heard a little bit of the premise of Creed, which one was more concerning? I think uh, Balboa was more concerned. <laughs> That makes sense. That yeah, makes sense. because Creed, because Creed, I was like, okay, it's going to be a spinoff. So, I mean, if it's not that good, I mean, okay, it's not a Rocky movie. It's a Creed movie, you know? And, and on top of that also, it's not going to be a 60-year-old man getting in the ring again, you right. know? Um, Which is why also, Creed works better than Balboa, but whatever. But the other thing was also was uh, I am right now concerned because I have read that Sylvester Stallone has said, I don't have any more 
create ideas, but I do have a re idea for Rocky. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, please no. Because Balboa, in my mind, other than the fact, and I've said this before, I think that they should have killed Rocky in Marvel. He should have died in the ring. Um, uh, in fact, he should have died on the street in Rocky V, but he, because he has brain damage and he got punched a bunch. But at the same time, then we wouldn't have Balboa. So- Oh, uh, how would the world be with it if we didn't have Balboa? It would be terrible. We'd That's have a great like movie. A third of the memes on the internet. <laughs> we wouldn't have Balboa or either of the Creed movies. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know. Okay. Anyway. Well, that's fine. I just, it felt like a money grab. It felt like he was just trying to relive his old fame, just like a lot of, I mean, it was, it, it felt in the camp of the Expendables movies to me. I'm just like, why are we doing this? Why are we here? Other than we're just going to have fun and just bring back a, a concept and change the numbers because of the name, because people don't follow one through six. So if I'm going to make something like a new movie, hoping to grab a new audience, it does, I don't care. Whatever it was, nothing, nothing, it didn't work for me. I never had interest in going back the end. Well, uh, folks, if there's anything you've learned about Tim today, it's that he's a horrible person. Moving on. All right. Um, so we already talked plenty about Rocky One, but Rocky One is my number five again. Oh my gosh! Again, just like you talking about number five being your number six, it's not that there's anything wrong with it or I don't like it, but I think I think you have more things wrong with Rocky Five than I have things wrong with Rocky One being my number five. So back off. Rocky one is just, it's just, it's a hard sit. It's a really hard sit. I, I'm talking about my favorite movies, or Rocky movies. I, I go back to that one the least. I probably would watch two before one, honestly. I've seen, after I, the first time I was uh, 16, I went through all of them for the first time. I really, for the first time I watched them all, I went back and I watched the, the cool, uh, the, the ones I like, cause I was working out a lot back then and watch i didn't go back and watch one and it didn't capture me with a lot of the stuff it was the train running up the stairs and stuff was cool and there's run his running through the through uh, philadelphia was cool but i just i can't go back and just enjoy rocky recreationally the only way i can watch it is as a movie and i don't watch films for entertainment i watch if i'm watching a, a film I'm watching it like, cause I'm trying to study something or make a video or, or make a, a list or compare something or research something or something or appreciate the score or something like that. If I'm watching a movie recreationally, a movie versus a film, that's different. And Rocky one is not a movie that I put in very often. I just don't, I'm sorry. Rocky is a fantastic film, but it's at the you back. Know, I think if I was the venture, I guess, I think that probably most people who are not Rocky fans. I'm not saying you're not a Rocky fan. I, don't I know. know you're all the time. But I think most people who are not who are not into the franchise like we are would probably probably not watch Rocky one much either. Because right. it's you're right. It is it's a I feel like Rocky the original Rocky is a film for film lovers. Yeah. Like you, you watch it because you just appreciate how well done it is. Right. It's not it is slow. And it is plotting, um, but I think there's a time for that. I, I'm not saying I watch the original Rocky the most. I don't. I know you don't. But, but I appreciate that one more right. than all the others. And that's why. And we approach the list differently. We had a conversation about that. It's fine. I don't think people watch. It's not, it's not fine. You're wrong. But that's okay. Yeah. I don't think people watch Citizen Kane or or Schindler's List or The Godfather or anything like recreationally. You know, but and Rocky, I would. It's 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 a little more entertaining than those, but it's uh, it's its own it's its own little thing, and it's it's great. It's a great piece of art. But I'm not, I'm watching a Rocky movie, right? Anyway, we we gave plenty of praise. My number, uh, what are we at? Six five four is Rocky two. I agree with you. It's completely underrated. There's nothing there's nothing that I don't enjoy. Uh, about it. I, I mean, it's hard to, it's, you know, the stuff with him getting job, it's just hard to watch. No one, it's not fun watching Rocky going through his, his slopes. I don't feel like that's his lowest point economically and financially and, and everything. It feels like it is, but he, even Rocky five isn't his lowest point in my mind. And I'll get there, yep. but Rocky um, two is just, you're watching him dread or dredge through the, the, the mud in his life like for like 40 minutes this is hard you don't want to watch it but it has some great action good training scenes it has some funny dialogue and stuff but you're seeing him at his most 
punchiness, I think, even more than after the brain damage. But you're seeing him at his most, like, he's just completely ignorant. You're watching him being really stupid, like, when he's on his uh, shopping spree and stuff like that, which is, I mean, it's natural and it's not the judgment on that. But the way he handles it, talking to Adrian and stuff like that. Um, one of the moments I love is when he's training, when he's punching the bag and he's just like, um, when he's like just hungry and he asks her to go finish dinner or something, he just wants to finish his workout and stuff. He's just depressed. Like it's just, it's a really good story. You're really feeling the experience he's having and he's, he feels like a failure. He feels like he can't provide for his family. And that's one of the motivations in that movie to get him back in the ring. Uh, we already talked about all the stuff with, with Apollo really awesome i love it i love i love the tension that is established between them but they still have this uh, appreciation for each other that turns into a great bromance um but it's it's good i don't have a lot anything that's like really that i don't like about it other than i agree with your point that he it seems off care or it, it seems like a, a continuity issue where at the end of the first one he says they ain't gonna be no rematch and then the second one he's first thing he says is he's, like, he's like i want a rematch yeah it doesn't make sense <laughs> um i agree with that but um other than that, it's a really solid, good movie. And and then my top seven chilling moments is when or electrifying moments is when when uh, she says go win and Mickey's like, what are we waiting for? I'm just like, I'm so excited. He has that look. He like looks yeah. up. He's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. Although I would say that I think that out of all the training montages, I don't necessarily like the training montage as much as some of the other movies it's it's um, not as well done you're seeing him doing all the stuff he did he's hitting the junkyard with a sledgehammer he catches the chicken and stuff it's like yeah, he's, he's carrying running through the, the street with, yeah with the kids all following him running up the stairs it's kind of like you're seeing a change in who he is in this in his uh in his city and everything but it's like okay <laughs> you know but yeah. it, it is fine it's, it's completely a fun passable montage but it's not it's not my favorite to watch either and his hair, he looks like He-Man when he has a bandana and it's like, he looks a little more Rambo-y. I, I don't know. Um, but on a side note, like if you think about it, imagine how much more money he made for that second fight than he did on the first one. Oh my I gosh. I mean, you know, the promoter, I mean, cause especially because he held out like he wasn't going to fight. You know what I mean? Like they had to pay. I don't think they ever talk about it in the movie, mm -hmm. but I bet they, they do. They ask him, what are you going to do? And he's like, oh, I'm going to pay the rent. I'm going to buy a... Talking about M Muppets. Uh, yeah, he's like, I'm gonna buy some Muppets for the kid, and he's like, I'm gonna buy Polly a snow a, a snow, snow cone. Snow cone, so you like snow cones? Yeah. Right? Like stuff yeah. like that. You're seeing him like really, mm -hmm. like, yeah. It's punchy anyway, and it's fine. It's fun. Um, the little moment, one thing, and I don't remember it that in detail, but one of my favorite parts of that of that movie is when when he's in the church while Adrian's in the coma. Yeah. Well, first when she when the nurse comes up and says, "Hey, visiting out, we need you to go." He's like, oh, "Can I stay? I'll be quiet." <laughs> you know? yeah. He's just so cool. But when he's in there and then Mick comes in and talks to him, that little speech that Mick gives him about about how he's like, "I, I don't want to freak you out, but I mean, this fight is still coming, and and this is this is still going on, and you're not ready. You're not ready, kid, and you're you're gonna get hurt." But then, but he says, "But if you if you're just gonna sit here, I'm gonna sit here with you." And yeah. I love that. And he's and he's like, I don't feel comfortable in the church. He says that, but that scene is so good. And then yeah. Mickey just no, what I love about that is he says, I don't feel like it, I, I don't feel particularly comfortable in a biblical place like this. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's a, it's a good scene because you're seeing yeah. like these are the these are the closest to him coming to his support, and they just they just love him. And he and he held out. And he's when he's reading to Adrian in the bed, like all the dr the the slow stuff in the beginning of the movie is fine i mean that, that's the stuff they gotta to swallow but the, the slow stuff at the end is so good it's so good mm -hmm. the, his reaction to the coma i love it so much heart i guess that's the way you see yeah. it and the honeymoon i love he's freaking rocky he's a freaking millionaire and his honeymoon and, and he she says in rock three we never really had a honeymoon their wedding night they went up to his crappy apartment and and just he laid her on that broken rickety bed you know i was like that's that's mm -hmm. cool anyway Rocky two is my number three or four. Uh, my number three is five. And you know, this is kind of in the, the same boat as my, my love for suicide squad. Suicide squad is a horrible movie, horrible movie. And there's so many problems with it and it's got some bad stuff, but for some reason I watch suicide squad more than all of the other <laughs> um, DCEU movies. Um, yeah, I, that's because uh, what's her name, Harley Quinn? Not 
just her. There's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff in it with uh, even Jared Leto and Joker and or with um, and Will Smith. There's a lot of good stuff I that I'm entertained by. That, that, but whatever. But Rocky Five is my Rocky good, good ple- or guilty pleasure movie, and I I probably other than one of the other ones I'll say, I watch Rocky Five probably more than all the others because I enjoy the buildup for the fight. I like the conversations with him and and. Uh, and uh, Washington Duke, whatever the guy's name is. Washington Duke, yep. Yeah. I, I like th- that character. I actually like him as a villain better than Tommy Gunn. I enjoy watching the transition. Yeah. I think that's right. I think he is the real villain in that movie. Yeah. yeah. And he's good. He's a, he's a good, fun yeah. comeback of salesman. He knows about the concussion. He's like, he's got a good sales pitch trying to get him back in the ring. And yeah. the way he's uh, promoting or pushing to manipulate Rocky to, to go along with it, it throughout the movie is just really good. And then using Tommy Gunn to get Rocky it's a good scheme. It's a good little villainous yeah. plot in the movie. You well, know? and you can tell throughout the whole movie. I mean, you can tell because if you remember the first fighter that George Washington Duke had on his side was Union Kane. Yeah. Right. And Union Kane, he, you could even tell like in every interaction that George Washington Duke did not care about Union Kane. Right. And, and as soon as, you know, in fact, in the press conference with Tommy Gunn for the first time, Tommy hears that Union Kane was, a little sick during the fight which is why which is why he beat him so handedly you know um i don't know if you remember that but they in the press conference are saying there was a rumor that he he was sick and he wasn't up to you know up to snuff and he's like oh, oh yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. wasn't feeling exactly he wasn't really feeling well but you know tommy gunn you know would have done the same thing even if he was 100 percent or whatever and yeah, then, yeah 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 and, and then the and then you have the 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 uh reporter who was like Union Kane was a paper champion with so much glass in his jaw, he should have been a chandelier. Like, you know, all these things where it was basically like they were saying, like, you guys, you manipulated the the system to, you know, make Union Kane a champion. Make him a and champion. now you're maybe, and and now you're maybe saying the where, system to make Gunn the champ. Yeah, there was a scene where they were having a negotiation or something, and, and then and Kane stands up and he's like, oh, I'll fight right. He's like, you sit down. Oh, you'll fight when I say you fight. Like, whatever that, yeah. that uh-huh. scene was. Yeah, I agree. I, that all that stuff kind of gets lost because it's it's boring. It's not as fun as like you know a vengeance um, story right. to to avenge Apollo's death or something right. or Mister T, you know, who's like calling out, "Yo, woman," you know, all that stuff. Yeah. It's not as exciting or fun as those, but it's really it's a pretty good plot for a Rocky movie. And people, I don't think people will give it enough credit. No, I agree. I think that I think that the uh, the criticisms of Rocky Five are not well founded. I think it's a good movie. But it definitely, in my opinion, is just a step below the rest of the Rocky movies. Like a, a good step below. Still I agree. a good movie. Still a good movie. And and I'm I'm not I watch it. I've watched it multiple times. Yeah. Um I, but, I agree. That's why but it's just it's not as good of a film or as 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 good of a solid even a Rocky movie, but it's it's a, it's my Rocky guilty pleasure movie. I, I love it. I could sit and watch it. Even the really? annoying kid. Ahead of Balboa the and the original. Shut up. Man. I mean, uh-huh. it's like, I just, I mean, I just have never heard such malarkey. Anyway. So, Rocky Five, and the, we already talked about, but the fight at the end, when when he's in there, he already gave up, he's sitting there playing pinball or whatever, and he's just like, this is Rocky, he's here with his brother, his front buddies and everything, and I interpreted that differently, talking about his buddies. When, you, when you're talking about his going to the schoolyard the first day, and the other, all the guys like, hey, Rock, welcome home, all that stuff. I didn't think of that as him like being reminded that he's back and he's like kind of it's like you know putting salt in the wound that he's like yeah I know I'm here you know it was more to me he was more he was like he doesn't care about his championship and popularity what was important to him was he's trying to talk to his son which oh, is yeah no he established that's... early on because by the end of it he's lost that connection and that's I think it was really cool a cool way to set that up early yeah no I agree but I think there were some subtle things that made it kind of my way like for example the fact that he was smoking again he was smoking yes 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 and then that and then he's smoking again like he is back he's back to being a a rocky Rocky. from rocky one yeah exactly yeah and so i agree with that um but his uh the establishment of the kid and then by time he's like he feels completely blindsided when when the kid like walks out he's like when where were when were you there for me when were we when were we i thought we were supposed to be but what do they have buddy or buddies or something i don't remember yeah, well, home it, team. It's yeah, a home team, home team. Mm-hmm. yeah we're supposed to be home team whatever and he leaves um and then he gives the he gives his the the the, the, um, the cuff link. mittens oh the to, cuff link. Uh, tommy oh i hate that that still burns me 
but I can't uh, believe I cannot. I mean, that that to me is the most unrealistic thing. Like, I agree. You, you know, you're you're gonna give that thing to Tommy Gunn. Yeah. And you're not gonna give it to your son, who you, by the way, just before this, we're talking about training. You yeah. didn't, and you didn't train at all. Right. You know. I I agree. That that's pretty dumb. But that's what I'm saying. You're, they're kind of over exaggerating his uh, being really stupid or, or you know being dumb. That's kind kind of like what I don't like about stuff in, in the in the second movie. Mm-hmm. But um, that exaggeration is like I don't, I don't like seeing Rocky that out of it. You know, mm-hmm. socially, just that mm-hmm. that uh, this place. But it works towards the end because by the end, where he's got his ducks in a row, he fixed his family. He left. Tommy left. That when the car peels off and he hears the ringing and stuff and he goes down and stuff, he's like, man, I'm a mess. And I, I really screwed up and I need to go back to focus. And that's when Adrian's like, why don't you, are you focusing on your son? He's the one that you're supposed to be taking care of and we're watching mm-hmm. over. And then he goes and tries to reconnect with him. He patches mm-hmm. that relationship building up. And then they're, oh my gosh, when they're watching the fight, I love this movie. When they're watching the fight and he's watching on TV and he's sitting there watching Tommy winning and he's watching Liv and punching the bag and he's like, yeah, go get it. He's like telling him, he's like coaching him while he's like hitting the bag and the family's sitting there supporting Rocky, even though he was a complete jerk to him. He, uh, he gets, he wins the thing and he says, and he uses the line, he was always an angel in my corner, which is how he described Mick. And he said, he yeah. thought he was going to mention Rocky, but he mentions Kane or uh, Duke, and it's like, oh, and you see that, that sinking in Rocky's face, and you're like, yeah. and that's you, it. And you, and you also see, you also hear the, the reporter or the commentator say the same thing. But you know, the interesting yeah. thing about that scene, if you go back and watch it, is that is not only, I love the fact that like every time he hits that bag, uh, Polly like jumps, like he hits it so hard, he yeah. jumps. Come on, Kane, let's rumble, go for it, Kane. Come on, Free. Tommy, what's the matter with your cage? That's it! That's it. Slip the jab, move, move it side to side, back and forth like a metrodome. Slip side, That's it. You see what? He remembers everything. All right, come on, Tom. I'm in there, man. Do what I'm doing. Do what I'm doing. But the thing is, is. I think that the point of that is, is when he's punching, you're seeing that he literally taught Tommy everything. Tommy's doing the exact same punches yes. that Rocky is doing on the bag to, to him, you know, like he's, yeah. he's basically and, doing Rocky, what Rocky taught him. And right? Adrian pointed at her. She, she was right on the, the nail on the head when she has said, I know you feel like you're still alive because of, because of watching Tommy, you're tra- you feel like, you know, it's vicariously that you feel you're still in there because of him. I get that. And when he's punching that bag, you re- that really comes to life. Yeah. And then when he just turns his back on it again, you're like, oh, well, that sucks. And then they right. come back and then that builds up for the dining scene. And then you go in the dining scene and then that whole thing is like, yo, I'm, he's, he moved past, he's matured, he's progressing. You're like, oh, he, he had his little story arc as a character. He got there, he learned what he did wrong and he learned from his lesson. He wrapped things up, fixed things up with his son. And now he's just hanging out at the bar and then then it goes down and then Polly goes down and then you stand then he's always like yo won't you try to help me down and you're like yes and then he gets out there and then he's like doing his street fight buster or uh, bouncers moves on him and stuff and it's yeah. so cool and you've never seen rocky like this before and the mute it's just all jazzy and everyone's like just hyped up and everything and he goes down and then they're fighting the fence and then they crush through the wall like it's superman versus doomsday into the streets of metropolis and then they're all in the main street and then the news camera's there and then the kid's like yo dad's on tv and he just gets so excited. And then he goes down. Well, that was before, but he goes down. And that's when he gets up with the, the and then you have Mickey come back mm-hmm. with the, with the, get up, you lazy bum, whatever he says. Yeah. He does. He does. Shut it down. Now get up one more round. <laughs> get up. Don't lay it down like this guy hard. Come on. Come on. He's no machine. I get the end of hell. Get up, you son of a bitch. Mickey loves you. And then the I didn't hear no bell part. Yo, Tommy! I didn't hear no bell. Watch One more round. Do it! Do it! Get back! Come on! Come on! Get back! Why? Tommy! Tommy, you don't need this. Tommy! You lose! You finish! I got one more round. Come on!
Oh, you get so chilling. That is the most, I'm sorry, that's the most exciting and fun fight to watch, but it's not about it's a boxing. It's good, but I, I, I disagree. But I do, one thing I do like about Rocky Five is I love the way that they brought Mick back. Yes. Um, because they have that one scene where he goes and it shows him giving him the cuffling. Right? When he's in the, he's in the, he yeah, goes, when, he, when he's in the gym, yeah. he, he's, he's viewing him in the gym and that's a scene. I love that throwback. You know, I love that throwback. I think it was never was seen a, before. It was new footage yeah. because yeah, it was, uh, what's the name hadn't died yet. Yeah, so I it. thought that was really great. And yeah. uh, man, I love that. So, and he had those, didn't he? He had those, uh, the cufflinks through along the whole show, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he had them in the other movie. He never yeah. established it. And so they established it yeah. just to lose them. It was, oh. Yeah. Anyway, Rocky Five is fun. It is so fun. I love it. I'm not saying it's. I know. Not fun i'm just saying you're wrong on that <laughs> just saying that's why it's that far out that's my number three number okay. two is rocky four rocky mm. four is um I, that used to be my favorite for a really long time until i kind of more recently watched through them as i as we've had more conversations about is where i picked, came out with my number one which is obviously three but rocky four has the best uh, best soundtrack if you were taking each individual soundtrack instead of all of them rocky four has the best soundtrack and it doesn't have I have the tiger or well, it, I think you said it does, but it doesn't have the uh, gonna fly now, but it has, I a, think that's the other way around. I think it has gonna fly. Does it have eye of the tiger or does it not? You said it did in the beginning, but I don't remember that. Well, the movie, I don't, think has, it does. I don't know if the actual soundtrack, well, I'm saying, but the movie sounds, even if it didn't have, if they didn't put it on the CD, I don't care. I don't own the CD. I have the collection CD. You're right. Gonna fly now is not in the movie. It's not, yeah. it's not in the movie and, it, and it's fine. But, um, and that's and that you think that's a necessity, but it is such a good soundtrack outside. But I don't. I don't think it's in three either. It is. It's in the beginning. I just watched it. <laughs> oh, okay. It is in the beginning. All right. All right. Um, it's in the beginning montage. But it, oh, okay. But, yeah, but it's uh, it doesn't have "Gonna Fly" now, but that's the only thing. But instead, it has a the James Brown song, which I I'm sorry. It's I a fun that. song. James Brown has his place, but if you're listening to that CD and you're working out, you got to skip that one. You can't work out to oh, live in America. I, <laughs> but I love that scene. That scene oh, where yes. he comes down and Ivan Drago comes up from the ring and he has no idea what's going on. Yeah. It's yeah, so and Yeah. And in the way that that circus. is so... He comes into a circus, dude. Yeah. And the thing is, is that like, that is, I felt like that's a little bit of a throwback to the first one because he's wearing the yeah. same type of clothes from the first one yep. and the first one he comes out being carried throwing out stuff looking like uh you know george washington and like all these different things and it's it's more he's more into the pomp and circumstance than he is the actual fight it's right? all yeah, it's a spectacle and it's a show yeah. and it's and, and even, and even one... says, he even says when he gets in the ring when he's standing there he goes man i feel born again like he feels like he was you yep. know he's back you're right that buildup, I, 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 for a long time, I didn't like, I appreciate Apollo more than I like Apollo. I can't, I don't like, that's why I like the later movies better. But um, he, when he gets in there, I think his motive for fight is, you show his, his bias in there, his race, not just not race, but you know, his, uh, his bigotry, which is, you know, which was founded, but when the movie was made, but he, Who's um, what? Who's bigotry? Apollo. He was, it was all about Russia. He was because he was a Russian and he was like coming, he's like oh. over here and saying they're the best at everything, all this stuff. That was total, it was believable. That was, I, I don't know if that was necessarily, I don't know if I'd call that racism. I, I think no, that was No, not just, racism, but it was bigotry. He was like, I don't want oh, a okay. Russian coming in here, you know, and saying- Well, yeah, yeah. I think I think that. that was, I think that was more just kind of, uh, what do you call it? Like, patriotism. Yeah, it's more patriotism at the time. But over, it, he was a little, it's what set him up and when you watch yeah. his death he totally lived and, and earned his own death he was responsible for it. everything everything mm -hmm. that happened that led up to his death until including telling rock not to throw the towel rock still had the choice and he had to deal with that that's why he had to yeah. rush he had to defeat russia to make up for that to atone for the towel yes. <laughs> yeah well that and the great thing about that really sorry to keep cutting you off but i mean like the thing about that that's so great is i love in creed 2 how they play off of that that, that like you can tell that uh rocky has carried the the fact that he didn't throw in that towel all the way for the rest yeah. of his life yeah i agree there was a lot of disappoint or a thing we felt short changed in rock in creed too but we'll, we've talked about that we'll talk about it another time 
but yes, and that that way that 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 not throwing the towel did uh, carry for a long time. Thanks for yeah. blowing on the microphone. Anyway, all that stuff, the training montage, Adrian going on that speech, like you mentioned, the staircase, he's like, Adrian, 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 all that stuff. It all just comes together. It's just a good, fun, it's a good movie to work out to. And I used to, as I said, in high school, I used to work out in my, in my room watching it. I would finish working out for the first two. There's two training montages at the end, two different songs and everything between her showing up. And that would be just so pumped up and so exhausted by the time I'd rewatch those over and over and over as I worked out. And I would just put my weights down. And I would just have to sit and just watch the fight because the fight is so good. I, yeah, I can't just watch good. just the training and move on. I'm like, hey, now let's see him do it. And yeah. that speech at the end, the whole you can change. If you can change, if I can change, you can change. Everybody can change speech. It was really good. The transition from the uh, the, uh, the audience, like we mentioned, and then the uh, whoever they were, the, the, the leaders getting up and clapping for Rocky at the end. I was like, that was cool. Yeah. And I was like, there's got to be no more satisfying moment than when they throw – everyone's cheering for you you just won and they throw the flag around you and you have your, and he puts his arm on and everything but just that solace that he had to finally have felt that he did it you know that yeah. i don't think and i'm gonna argue this i don't feel like that was his highest moment mm. just like i didn't feel like rocky two or rocky five were his lowest moment i think i, mean, his- I, I would say i would say his highest moment probably happened in between four and five when the wall actually came down <laughs> he's like i did it he went probably like punched out each brick you know <laughs> yeah yeah no his I, and a lot of people think i think his they think his highest well, you even mentioned you think you feel like his highest moment you said that it was rocky two when he got the belt when he yeah. defeated him a lot of people think his lowest moment is rocky five when he loses everything right. i think both of those are in three and i'll get there but rocky four just complete um, just it's a good fun action Rocky where you see him at his most noblest you see him he doesn't fly off the handle he doesn't have a low point in the movie really it's just all about rest of you other than the, the towel but it's just about him avenging the death of Apollo Creed and um, fighting Drago who he respects I like the respect I love the relationship between him and Drago he had no beef with him other than he killed him but Apollo brought it on himself and he recognized that yeah but that's a pretty big beef I mean, it is. I'm not saying he wasn't motivated to fight, but I think that was part of when he pulled that, that when he reaches and crumbles up that, that picture of Drago when he was doing the training. I think it was saying, he's like, this isn't about you. It really isn't. I need to do this to not to defeat the person that killed my friend, but I need to do this because my friend, it was important for my friend for this guy to be beaten by American you know and i'm going to do what he couldn't do it's not about you being defeated it's about us winning you know, does that make sense yeah i don't know if i agree with that i think it was solely you killed my so- friend i want to kill you or beat you i don't think he wanted to kill him i think he wanted to beat him beat him and, of course and, he didn't want to kill yeah, him yeah and uh um yeah and and i just want to throw this out there because i just i you know, I, I talk so highly generally about Rocky stuff. There's one thing I think in all of the franchise uh, that I felt was the least satisfying thing. And that was, and it's going to go to Creed. It's Creed 2 when he finally gets, when he and and Ivan Drago come together in the, in the restaurant for the first time. Because I had been in my head playing that moment for, <laughs> I mean, ever since Rocky 4. I was like, what would he say to him? Because at the end of the movie, Drago, Drago had respect. Drago had respect. He's like to the end, and he gave him, and he and they hit gloves, and then they fought that last round. You know, he had respect for him. You know, and, he said, "You're dead." What do you mean to the end? No, he, no, he didn't say you're dead. He said to the end. To the end. No, he said yes. you're, you're dead. To the end. You're dead. No, he did not. No, okay, he I'll check with Subta. I swear he said you're dead. To the end. No, I'm gonna look it up right now. Okay, but anyway, I agree with you, but and and it was really dissatisfying because and that's what I was talking about in Creed, too. That it didn't feel like there was that resolution. The towel throwing in the towel moment was resolved at the end of Creed two. I really felt some really strong closure about all that stuff. I won't talk about that another time, but. Um, even that good setup where he's like, oh, there's this guy who's been waiting for you or whatever. And he like turns, you see the back of his head and he has a hood up or whatever. Like, oh my gosh, it's him. You can tell by his mask. You're like, it's Drago. And he's like, you're going to talk to Drago. And he goes in and talks to him and it's like, oh my gosh. And then it was a very dissatisfying conversation. So I, I have confirmed, he says, until the end. 
to the end. Yeah, you, did you just type that on your Facebook and now it's the written word? No, I actually looked it up on Google. All right, and well, I was saying, you're dead. You're dead. Anyway. You're wrong. All right, well, I'll watch it again. Like I love it. I love that movie. It's so fun. And I like it is. It. You know, it's a it's a great one. Music. And it's the one it's, really it's the one I watched the most, I think. Me too. That's the one I watched the most. It's not my favorite. And it's not yeah. the best film, but that's the one I watched the most. Yeah. Anyway, that's because it has the most uh fluff montage music, the stuff that we love the most about a Rocky movie. I think I think three and four um are the most iconic of the Rocky movies. Correct. Like Speaking I think three. Yeah. Other other than the the running up the stairs in Rocky One, I think that those both those generally those movies are the ones that everybody thinks about when they think of Rocky. Movies. Yeah. And any all parodies are parodies of Rocky One. Like anything that's a parody of Rocky, it's always stuff about Rocky One. Nothing yeah. the other ones. But Rocky Three, Josh, I'm sorry, Rocky Three. I, I, it's not the best movie. You you pick the best film. I think we could probably maybe we could agree on this. Rocky One is the best Rocky film by far. Yeah. Rocky Three is the best Rocky movie. How about no. that? It has no. no? You're no. wrong. Anyway, Rocky Three. Here's the thing, and I just watched it, and I even prepared as I was watching it a a, a sub top seven list of why Rocky Three is the best. Oh no, man. not really. This isn't why it's the best. These are just some of my favorite things about it. This is how I'll do my little comments on it. Um, it has the, the thing is it has the most, I think it has the most emotion. Oh, gosh, I don't know, Rocky, or Apollo dying is pretty emotional. Um, yeah. And we're not talking about excitement, but let's we'll talk about the Mickey lows. Di Mickey dying was pretty emotional. Yes. I, th I think Rocky, the Rocky's reaction to Mick's death was so emotional. Yeah. You know, because it happened right after he lost the fight. He had lied to Mick about. He said, "Yes, he okay, you're you're going right into it. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. so so let, let's talk before that. So let me talk about some of the, the cool things that are, that are contained in this movie. Number one, we both said that you have Rocky Two as the best fight. What yeah. guess what's the first thing that happens in Rocky Three? You get to see the conclusion of the best fight and his victory. Then it rolls right into this awesome montage of the cuts of him defending the battle while you're establishing Clubber Lang showing up and sitting in the audience at his matches and him fight or fight in the street and his little records as he's like pummeling people. You get to see this is all being established in a montage before you have our first line of dialogue from Rocky. You know what I mean? That you already know who our villain is and you kind of get to see what, what the difference is. It's awesome. And that's really exciting. And then it just comes to a complete stop and we have to have Polly thrown in jail. We already talked about that. And then the little speech about friends don't know, they do because they want to do. Okay, great message. Nothing to do with the rest of this movie, except for unless you're going to say Paulo, he was doing because he wanted to do, but he had something to get out of it, you know? Right. So anyway, there's that. Then, uh, then you roll right into the challenge. Now, before the challenge, you, uh, you have Clummer Lane, okay? Or not Clover Lane, sorry, Thunder Lips. I'm sorry, Thunder Lips is probably the most fun out of a scene, out of all of the Rocky movies. There's the, the so show, you know, Polly going like, why are they carrying him? He's like, he's yeah. walking, <laughs> stuff like that. The Polaroid stuff, he's like, I'm gonna chase you a little bit, you chase me, you know, he's like, it's, yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. And then the I, I love when he's like, nobody does this for charity. And he's like, Bob Hope would. Yeah, he's like, that's yeah. true. It's just all that. Like, it's just so fun. Thunderless gets up there and he's like, you know, playing the crowd like a wrestler does, but a boxer doesn't do it like that, you yeah. know, and it's such a huge diversity. Um, it's, it's just so fun. And watching the girls and everything and just this, their reaction is just like, they're so, they've never been more out of place than watching. I love, I love that. Th Thunder Lips, the ultimate male. Yeah, like, the ultimate male. So funny. <laughs> He's like, that's the biggest like part of the world. He says to him, he says to him, well, what do you think he eats? And he's like, about 202 pounds. Yeah. I mean, 202 <laughs> pounds. What does he eat? Uh, yeah. 202 pounds. And yeah. Rocky weighing 202 yeah. pounds. And, and, and a lot of, and a lot, I think a lot comes out of that, right? Like, like a lot comes out of that thing. You got Clubber Lang, first of all. In the audience. In the audience. On top of that, also, you see Mick starting to get, Sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. right. When they, when the when the rumble starts to happen, when he throws yeah. Rocky out, yeah, it starts and, having a hard time. He's and, like, I'm, and, fine, I'm fine. 
And in fact, on top of that, I think that's part of the reason why Mick wanted to retire so badly, you know, because after that is when they started, they had the, the speech about retirement. And then right. public um, but, but on top of that also, I think all of that jokiness kind of shows their relationships. Where, well, where Rocky is in his life. Yeah. Like he's not taking it as seriously. Cause that's the thing, right? Like that's what, that's what Mick tells him when he's like, you know, you can't win rock, you know, right. this guy will kill you to death inside of three rounds. Right. And yeah. And he says, he goes, because, um, uh, he, he goes, uh, you're crazy. He's just another fighter. And he goes, he's not another fighter. Right. This kind of wrecking machine and he's hungry and you haven't been hungry since you won the belt. You wore that right? belt. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, <clears throat> You know, it's all set up and it's a, yeah. and in the montage it's also you're seeing that you're seeing rocky in the fights but he's they're easy you're just showing the the easy victories yeah. and then he's, he's doing winning commercials easily. and screwing around he's rich and doing magazine covers while you're watching clumber lang just training and training and training yeah by the time we get here and that's it this is this is not a real fight but clumber lang is so invested in research and trying to find his window of opportunity he's even there at this fake fight just to watch Rocky, you know, it's like, why right. else would he be there in a tuxedo, yeah. you know? Yeah, and on top of that also, another thing that I think a lot of people don't remember is, is Mick says to Rocky when they have that little discussion about, you know, okay, it's your head. Cause he asked him, he's like, come on, train me one more time. I'll live in the gym. And he's like, it's your head kid. And he goes, uh, but he says, the one thing he says to me, he goes, you know, um, I saw, you know, when Apollo Creed, the beating Apollo Creed gave you should have killed you. Like, killed but, you. Then, but he's like, but the, the, uh, the, one, the worst thing that could have happened to a fighter happened to you. You got civilized. Domesticated. Yeah. 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 He's like, got civilized. It's so uh, good. Well, like, let's the, talk the, about dialogue, that. the dialogue in all of these movies, I mean, man, they're, it's so good. You know what I mean? Like the, the way that they say things and it's just the little nuances are so good. Huh. Yeah. So that's, let's talk about that scene. So even if you're wrong, <laughs> thinking about that scene, he goes mm -hmm. in, he's he's on top of the world, you know, in every aspect in society and finances and everything. But where, when he, as far as who he was in the very beginning, remember you already talked about in the first movie, he had to prove something by going the distance so he's not just a loser. Okay, now he's not a loser, but now he wants to actually get the championship because he's gonna be, now he's taking things personally and has something to, he has something to accomplish. And right. he has um, Adrian for the first time saying, win, do it. Yeah, like right, beat right, him. Right. And now he's like, I gotta beat him for my wife, not just fight and get the money. Right. And then you get to the third one where he's been carried for a while. Now he's domesticated. And now he's like lighter and he's not as serious, even though he's like much more cut than he was in, in two. Yeah. That's, that's fine. That's yeah. just Rocky, close career. Rocky found supplements. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now he's in there talking to Mick and Mick says, you know, he, he explains, oh, well, we have this scene on the, on the, the ceremony getting the, at the statue, the inauguration or not inauguration, but the, uh, whatever it's called. A dedication so he goes and he's talking are you falling asleep dude no are you getting tired of talking about rocky three i'm not tired at all all right just, you're getting I'm bored like I'm all right just, i'm just doing my money really. <laughs> but this is the thing so he goes he's at the at the speech and he announces retirement and then you have clever lane shooting off his mouth and he's like this is where he says you've been dodging me i'll i've been i'm saying this in front of the whole world and he's like and he's, and he's like okay well, let's fight and mikey's like no and he stops and he says this guy you can't win yeah. He no, he doesn't say that there. I know he, he doesn't he, use that he, line, but he's telling him he's he you can't you no you he'll this guy will kill yeah. you, and yeah. he's like this is a this is like shocking. Rocky's like, what are you talking about? And yeah. he's like, never Mick, Mick says, I don't want any more of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He says, if you do it, you can do it without me. And so he's completely disarmed. And while he's disarmed, figuring out what Mick like being this bombshell just dropped on him that Mick doesn't think he can beat this guy. Then he calls out Adrian and says, Hey woman, you can come back to my place. I'll show you a real man. It's like. Rocky is just imploding. His whole world is yeah. like just thrown up in the air. It's like, what is going on? My this guy is so. And by the way, I gotta say that is so savage. Like for for oh you know, yes, Bubba Lang to go like go there. He got personal. Yeah, and, and the thing that's great in about public, that, in front of everyone. I I so wish that we could have had somewhere uh, another scene of Rocky sitting with Clubber Lang. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because, I don't like, want them to do it in Creed Three. No, I don't want. Don't them to touch do Clubber Lang. Yeah, but yeah, and also I don't think Mr. T is in the mind frame to act well. But that man, that that whole thing. Like, no, you you're curious how they feel, how he feels about Rocky after all that too. Yeah, yeah, how he feels, and also how Rocky feels about Clubber Lang. Because really, if you look at it, if you're a professional, 
but Bill Lang was just, he was hungry and he wanted to be the champ. Yeah. He was in the, he was in the same position that Rocky, Rocky was, was in, in the first, he was yeah. fighting Apple, uh, Apollo Creed, you yeah. know? And they even said before the final match, he's like, do you, do you hate him? He's like, no, I don't hate him. I, I pity him because he's going to get yeah. hurt. But he's like, yeah. I just don't want any, no one's going to, I'm going to break down whoever tries to take what's mine. This is my belt now. Don't touch me. Yeah. You know? Right. Anyway, but in that scene where he, after that, when everything, he's, he's completely just, just confused and doesn't know what's going on. Then he goes and like, and Mick left, apparently. He follows him home and he makes packing his bag and he's like, what's going on? Why won't you train me? We have one more fight. What do you mean it's over? And then Mick has this conversation that just reveals one that he was carried and it wasn't like a dishonorable carry. It was just like, it was a fake, not fake. It was just, it was a, a commercial. He was, setting, he was setting, he was setting him up for success. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. he, he had the career as a professional boxer, but it wasn't like a real, um, a real, he wasn't a real fighter. He was, he wasn't a real um, combatant. Like he was trying to get the title. And he was just, it wasn't being carried like it was nothing, but, and that's what Adrian says on the beach. It wasn't, what do you mean? We were there sweating and bleeding with you during all those. It wasn't, they weren't nothing and meaningless. But Mick was saying, my job was to protect you. Like you said, he almost killed you and he didn't die. And my job was to protect you and keep you, keep you the champion. Great. That's his job. So, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I think that that's all generally true. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't think it, I don't think the stakes are as high. I'm not there yet. I'm not on the stakes here yet. All right, let's do it. He, um, but this is all stuff and mixed. And then he's realizing that he's not, he's like, he said, he feels like a fake. Rock personally feels like a fake. And he says, I need you to help me win one more. He's like, we don't need it. And then Rock says, no, but I need it. I need to know right. that I'm still someone. I'm still, I'm still relevant. I'm still, I can, I'm still a fighter. I still have the heart and the drive that I can do what I did before and beat this guy, especially now with the way he called him out and with what happened. Now he has his pride too. So then he goes into the training. We know what happens. Rocky's, uh, you know, he's not paying attention. And then, um, by the time they get down to the actual fight, they're in the rocker room, they're in the press conferences and everyone's talking to him. There's, he's like, yeah, we're going to have some fun. We're going to relax after this. And the whole reason, that Rocky is really going through with this is all internal personal reasons. But then everything hits the fan. You get to the point of right before the match in the locker room, Clumber Lang comes down the stairs after Rocky, while Rocky's just waving the crowd and the press and stuff. And then Clumber Lang starts up his, starts off his mouth again. And in that Rocky or, or, um, or um, uh, Mick ends up on the ground, Adrian calls. By the time Clumberlane gets out and they take Mick out and he's on his deathbed, you have to remember, he says, this is why it's so important, He's this is all about him, and he says, turns to Adrian and says, what do I do? And, and Mick gets pissed. I can't go out there and fight like this. I can't, I can't go out there like get this. Out, get out of there. Get going with it. Take him. Take him good. Get it over with. Why don't you? Adrian, what am I supposed to do? What the hell do you mean? What are you supposed to do? After all these years together, you don't know what to do. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now get out there and do it. Do it. And he's like, I'm ashamed for you. I mean, you should be embarrassed that you have to ask what you do. After all this time, you know what you need to do. Get out there and do it. I've, I have trained you. I, you know what to do. I prepared you. Get out and do it. Why are you asking her what to do? And he's really coming hard on him. So now he has this personal responsibility with the one person that he wouldn't be where he was if it wasn't for him taking the job in the first place. And Mick doesn't believe in him. He had this doubts, but now he's like giving him his last instructions, go beat this guy. And then he says, or else, and you said before, he'll take you down to three in three rounds. He says, okay. He goes out there. He's all confused. He turns, says, Adrian, take care of him. He goes out there and just gets destroyed comes back in the second or in the knockout in the second round comes back and now you have Mick on his deathbed where he already offended Mick he already hurt his feelings he already feels like he failed him by, by not being who he was supposed to be and and being a fake and now you have Mick dying and then he says how did what, what happened he says it was a knockout he said which round second round he lied to Mick on his deathbed this is his lowest point not just because he's sad because it's Mick, but he has now lost the title, which is which what he was trying to protect. He was about to retire. He lost everyone's respect. The whole every his title that meant so much to him. I know it wasn't all about that from the very beginning, but from the second movie to the third, 
that the title was what was his career. That was who he was. And now that was all fake. So that was pulled from him. Mickey died and he had to die on bad terms where, where he lied to him and he was like embarrassed in front of the whole world. And then you get to the beach scene where now even Adrian is calling him out on his crap. That is his lowest point. Getting in the training and everything is fine, but he is still just at the lowest personal point. It's not about the money he loses in five. It's not about his best friend dying in Rocky Four. It's not about the you know the baby and all that stuff in Rocky Two. The lowest point emotionally and as a person he ever got to was in Rocky Three. It is so heavy in all of those scenes that tr that connect together that this is where he is just the weakest. He's he's broken. He doesn't know know who he is anymore. And you never you never you never see him like that since the first movie. That he doesn't really know who he is. In this movie, when he's drifting and staring off at the beach, he is lost. And who is it that comes and brings him out of it? Not Apollo yelling at him, not memories of Mick, but it's Adrian with that speech, which snaps him out of it. That's And then when he wins that fight, the cool thing about that victory is he says, I trained you what to do. You got to you now go do it. Go do what I said. He says, what do I do, Adrian? He taught him to be independent. He goes and gets this training from Apollo and Apollo's teaching him, here's how you do it. Here's the skills. He teaches him the footwork and the moves and all that stuff, teaching him how to use different muscles and be quicker and everything. But when he gets there in the ring, he's realizing that he has now become something because the whole point when Mick died was he said, he said, I can't do it. I can't do it. But he said, no, you know what to do. And then he's the one that figures out the strategy. Rocky, Everyone's yelling at him and Apollo's yelling at him and he's saying, what are you doing? You're screwing up. He's like, no, it's strategy. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. He finally found it that he can be independent. It's not about the training. He figures out how to beat Clubber Lang in the third round and he does it by himself with his own strategy. And when he wins, he didn't just win the belt back. He won the belt back. He won everyone's respect and he proved it to himself. He won and he, he overcame the lie he told the Mick. But he also became for the first time his own person where he felt like a, a fake champion all that stuff and he's like i don't know what i am i feel like i'm a fake and i gotta do this for myself and adrian said you got to do it for yourself you're the one that has to live with it and we can't live with you if you don't do it he won everything back and became a powerful fighter that was that same fighter that walked in the ring with drago there was no one had to, that's the thing when you said and when he was talking to duke in the fourth one he said you know what to do just i'll be here to help when did he learn how to be a fighter? In the second, in the third movie. That was his greatest accomplishment was like he, that's when he became or stood up on his own and knew what to do. And there's all that flavor throughout it that just really builds up to that moment. That victory, I, I think, has more stakes than the patriotism, than the death of Apollo, than the championship and the money in the third one and the belt and, and proving something to himself. This was where he had all the stakes of his relationships, of his family, of his respect for himself and his death of his trainer that he had to redeem. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree. And, and I'll tell you the reason why. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Uh, it makes sense. And I think that that, um, that low point is only made low by the fact that he realizes that Mick had been carrying him for 10 fights. And oh, I'm sorry, one more thing so, before you finish yeah. your thought. You gotta realize too, if he hadn't pushed Mick to do that last fight because of his pride, Mick wouldn't have possibly, probably wouldn't have died so quickly. All the thing, the fair, things that led fair. into him, he that was fair. the other thing. The weight of his being gone in the first place was also his fault. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, but I think that him winning the belt in Rocky Two was his highest point because he had overcome. He had gone from I just want to go the distance yeah. to I'm gonna beat this guy. It's big. And he and he beat him. And he even says in the last moment he says aside from my kid being born this is the greatest night in the history of my life right so history, you know not future <laughs> sure i understand what you're saying know, i'm just saying and you're not you wrong know, you're not wrong right and on top of that also think about that rocky had just had a fight where he lost but he went the distance with the greatest fighter he he made a bunch of money and lost it all he couldn't get a job anywhere he couldn't pay his bills you know, he was a little, I think he was more pathetic in the second one than he was in the first, because in the first one, yeah, he lived in a crappy apartment that stunk, but he was he, content. He's, he, he was, he, yeah, I mean, he could make the money to make it work. Whereas now he'd built this life that he wanted to build for Adrian, and now he couldn't afford it, and he had to send his pregnant wife to work because he couldn't provide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
you know, so, so I think that that was a pretty low point. I don't think it was his lowest point. I think his lowest point is probably when he was back to, uh, to Philadelphia, to South Philly. Uh, that would probably be his lowest point in Rocky five, I think. Um, but, uh, it's a, you know, it's a strong that. argument for that. I agree. Yeah. Getting but, the belt being high and him losing everything financially and everything in Rocky five. Well, not only losing everything, but then not having the ability to do the one thing that could easily get him out of that. I mean, yes. if you think about it, I mean, right before that, he had a press conference where George Washington Duke came out and said, this is a contract for him to make more money than anybody on this planet. Like the most money anyone's ever made for a fight on the planet. And he couldn't take it because he had brain damage. Right. right? And so, um, so I think that was a pretty low point. I, I, I think I understand what you're saying. And yeah, there was a high and a low in that movie. Um, I think that the, for him as a made, person, come on, that's it's it's not just a high and low in this period of his life. This was huge. Yeah, Everybody I think was, his championship that he got from Creed, the, and and Creed even said this guy is a tougher rival than I was. The thing is, the difference is though, is I think that there it's not as low of a point because Adrian put it best. She said, she said, you know, we have cars, we have money, we have the house. What we, have everything but, we have everything but the truth, yeah. right? And so, you know, even if he had retired and not taken that next fight, yeah, he'd have regrets, but you know, he's doing okay, you know? And and so- um, You're, they're you know, the same person that was justifying him getting into the ring in 60, in, in, when he's in his 60s, because he, he, he can't give that up. Now you're saying like, yeah, I understand. He'd probably have some regrets. No, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's not the lowest point. I don't think Rocky Six was his lowest point either. You know, I, I, I think know. that I think those are good. Those are strong justifications for him as to why he continued to fight. I think even the fact that he had the money and had all the things, he still needed to fight to prove it to himself that it wasn't that he wasn't a, a fake. You know, that he wasn't a fake champion, and that was important. But I think that those are the lowest stakes because no, 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 not just that he was a fake. It wasn't about the belt. It was about him believing that he was this uh, this accomplished fighter and warrior that he maybe wasn't. He's like, I don't even know who I am now because everything was 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 all fake. No, that's, that's what I'm saying is is that I think that you know after he won the belt, he started getting a certain healthy ego about being a champion. Yeah, and then he realized that maybe he wasn't the champion that right. he was supposed to be, and then he lost because and Mick was telling him you're going to lose, and he's like, oh, I'm not. And he didn't even take the fight seriously. You know, I mean, the, the training for that last fight was ridiculous. He didn't hardly train at all. And then he got torched, yeah. you know? And so, so then he was like, maybe I'm not, I'm not the champion that I thought I was. Right. So and that's so, why he had to get into the ring to prove it. Right. I think, for, here's what I'd say. I think if he didn't have those 10 fights in between Apollo Creed and Clubber Lang, and he went and fought Clubber Lang immediately and lost, I don't think it really would have been that big a deal. No. I agree. You know what I mean? And so, um, so yeah, you know, I, I agree it's a high and a low point, but I don't think it's the highest or the lowest point of the series. I just think it's a, I think it's an important personal accomplishment for him. Sure. He was in sure. each, each movie has a, has a good story arc for Rock. I mean, for his entire arc. And I, I, and I think that even carried over into four, like I said, when Duke's like, you already know what to do. You are an independent. You don't need a trainer. You need, you need assistance, you know? And, yeah. and the thing in the in the ring where he lost to Clubber Lang after the first round, where he's like, he's so strong. He's so, where's Mick? I need Mick. He was like, he like almost was disoriented, forgot where Mick was, but he was like, I need Mick. I can't do this. He was drowning. He was drowning in life and drowning yeah, in his emotions. He even, says, he even said, I'm losing, Polly. Like, yeah. Like he, and, like, yeah. and Polly's like, I can't do anything. And he was like, I need Mick. So to go from there, where he's like, I need Mick in this low point where he's lost everything to like at the end was like when, when Apollo's like you're screwing up he's like I know what I'm doing that is so much growth and I think that is so much relevant or so much that's so much relevant that that's the Rocky that steps into the ring with Drago in the next movie and wins well there was no the progression for Rocky in the next one that's not what the movie was about it was this same guy that's now a, an accomplished and and uh, independent warrior he's ready to go fight the battle for his friend that died so so the interesting thing about that too you keep bringing up that he beat him in three rounds and all that. He, Rocky is not the only one who knows that strategy because right before that, Apollo and Duke are watching film from a fight. And he, and he says, he goes, 
yeah, the time of pace we're going, where, where he's going to burn out maybe in seven or eight rounds. we got to put him away early. No, they're talking you about know? Rocky. Right. That's what I'm saying. They said he's going to burn out in seven or eight rounds. we got to put him away early. Right. And so, so the strategy was to put him away early. Rocky no, no, did no, no, figure no. out. The strategy, well, they were trying to figure out how to beat him down and to, to be enduring. The, the, the What Rocky figured out in the fight was that he could take the hits and he can make him burn his energy faster. And that when oh, he yeah, it was, energy, it was a rope rope rope. down, the strategy yeah. from Apollo was just to be quick and survive. Yeah, well, Ro yeah, Rocky figured out the rope a dope thing where he basically would like, you ain't so bad, and then make him hit, you yeah. know, make him keep, just punch himself out yeah. after a couple of rounds. Yeah. But, oh, um, sorry, it's, it's awesome. And then yeah, you have no, it's, it is so, so okay. a battle at the end of it it's just that movie is just so great so okay now here's the question here's okay. the question where do you put the creed films within your list like wh where would you think you put them so creed 2 for me would go between my five and four so i would so here's the, the least ones i would watch i'd watch six and then i'd watch one I choke it down, and then I'd watch Creed two because it has some cool stuff that I really liked as a movie. It's really fun for a modern movie, but I don't get a lot. I, I, there's a lot of things that I'm not getting out of it that I want out of it, with, like the Drago stuff. And then I would watch two, and then then I'd watch Creed one, and then I watch five, four, three. If I was going from most excited put, and entertained by put five, also above both Creed movies. Well, I'll say this: I've owned all the Creed movie or the Creed movie for years. I haven't gone back and rewatched it, but I've watched five several times. Wow, it's so, it's, it's a fun movie. It's just for the this schlocky action fun that I get out of the Rocky movies. That's I get that Creed is more like a drama to me than an action movie. It is, it is, but it, not, it's, it's not my entertainment. As we've established, I I like those dramas. Yeah. I think I think I would probably go okay. So I went five two, and then um, three four Balboa one right. So I would probably put Creed two right below three above two, uh, and I think I'd put the original Creed above three but below four. Because they're following this at home because I'm not going to edit these numbers in here. <laughs> no, so I mean, I'd put it between, I, I, like, my Rocky Rocky Four was my third, and yeah. Rocky Three was my fourth. I would put Creed the original in between those because I I thought it was an excellent movie, really. That's well the exact done. same spot I put them in. Yeah, but That's Creed One, right? Yeah, and then my Creed Two would would probably go between four and two, so between my my fourth and fifth. Because I like, I, I think Creed 2 is great for the story. I love that it's a Drago spinoff, but but at the same time, I I had some criticisms of it. You know, I think I think Creed should have been a trilogy. I think that the second one should have been about him fighting, um, fighting uh, the other guy he fights at the very beginning. Because if you remember in Creed 1, in Creed 1, he has a scene where he, he goes and he's trying to prove the Duke's son. Duke's son is the other trainer in the right. in, in both of those movies trying to prove to Duke's son that he has what it takes to fight and so he goes in there and he says hey you know I got you know here are my the keys to my Mustang anyone lay a hand on me they can take the Mustang and then I can't remember the guy's name but he comes in and he's like the second best fighter he's the one who's supposed to fight pretty Ricky Conlon and breaks his hand or break, his jaw gets broken so he can't fight him and then Creed steps in he comes in and just lays Creed out and takes his Mustang and so then in Creed 2 that guy, the first thing you see is, is Creed is fighting that guy for the championship right. and he beats him and gets his Mustang back. In my opinion, Creed three should have been about Drago. Yeah. Creed, yeah Creed two should have been about him winning the championship and fighting that guy and getting his Agreed. Mustang back. He could have had all of the stuff that happened in, in Creed two, could have still been there, but just this other fight, because then you would have had a, a big, a big build up for him finally getting the belt. You could have had a whole movie about him having a bunch of fights and getting ready to go and fight for the championship. Because, I mean, it was really only his like second or third real professional fight fighting pretty, pretty Ricky Conlon. You could have had a whole thing like Tommy Gunn where he was just fighting all these fights, getting ready for the championship and then fighting the champion and yep. getting the belt, right? You could have done all of that. Um, and then three could have been 
the uh, the Drago thing, and you could have really spent that extra 15 minutes or whatever that was on that on making a stronger stronger connection between Ivan Drago and Rocky. And I really wish that that they could have been some sort of uh, some sort of reconciliation between Ro like a show of respect between Rocky and Drago. Uh, I love there the was. dialogue. Huh? I think there absolutely was. Where? That ties in the towel scene, the the whole that moment where spoilers, I guess, but Drago when Vigo was his, his, the son, whatever his name is, when yeah, he was getting uh -huh. beat, uh -huh. and then everyone, the prime minister, whoever left, and then um, Red Sonia left, <laughs> and yeah. then um, yeah. Mom. everyone was gone. Yeah. The, the the fight was already over when Drago picks up the towel and throws it in. Or before he throws it in, or Drago is the one that has to make that call on that one. Rocky looks over and sees his wife leave, and he sees that Drago, this guy who this formidable foe that he had respect for as a as a fighter, lost everything. Rocky watched the finale of him of Drago losing everything before Drago stands up and throws a towel in because he's not going to lose his son. Mm -hmm. Drago killed. His or you know, Apollo, he killed him in cold blood in the ring in a fight that was mutual between both of them. He wasn't gonna let um, Vigo, I think it's Vigo, right? He wasn't gonna let his son get killed making yeah, the same mistake Rocky did. And I think so, in that moment, everything correlated for all of them. And Rocky was like, I know what's happening, I see what he's going through. And he threw in the towel. And when Rock and Drago goes in, he steps between, he's like, and, and, and Vigo was still in a fight. He's like, it's, it's don't, it's okay, it's okay. Like yeah, I've, so, I've done, I've been in the ring with what you're going through right now. It's not worth it and it's over. So, we already lost. so interesting, interesting thing there. How much of that do you think plays into Rocky's decision to finally go and see his son? A lot. I mean, yeah, I think you're A right. Lot. And I hadn't really thought about that until right now. So that's, that's my favorite part of that movie. And it, if it just that moment, I wish it was better earned. I wish the diner scene had built it up a little bit better. I wish a lot of the connection with these characters had established a little bit more. I, I, I wish there was more buildup because that scene was brilliant. It was so good. My favorite part of that movie, I think the, the best scene, I almost, I, I hate to admit it, but I almost got teary eyed, was the scene where Creed is one, he's beaten Drago and he goes to Rocky and tries to get him in the ring. And Rocky's like, nah, this is your time now. And then it shoots the shot of Rocky sitting on the outside of the yes. ring, just in a chair by himself, looking yeah. up at the ring. And it was kind of like a passing of the torch moment. Yes. Like, that's it. Rocky is done. Like, that's it. He's done. It's, that's it's it. so well done. That's why they shouldn't make any more Creed's. No, I don't, I don't know if they should. shot alone. I don't think that, these, that they should not make any more Creed's. I think that the movies should now be Creed and they don't yes, need Rocky. Yes, that's what I mean. Rocky, yeah. him sitting in that chair and then in fast fight. My thing with him and the son was there's nothing established about the drama with him and his son. That was completely stupid, but whatever. Well, they, they, he, the what thing is, is, is I think the drama, the drama between him and his son had been established way back in Rocky Five. I mean, and, you know, because- oh, They yeah, ended up, no. No, because think about it. There's not only that, but the big beef that his son had was that they were in South Philly where everybody knew Rocky and he was living in his dad's shadow. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. And that's the fact. And so you see that in Rocky Five when they're walking down the street and he's taking them to school. Hey, Rock, hey, Rock. Everybody's yeah. talking to Rock. He gets beat up because, oh, you're Rocky's kid, right? Well, yeah, your dad was a punk and then he punches him. You know, like, yeah, yeah. you know, he probably dealt with that most of his, his but, Yeah, years. but they resolved. They push through that in that in that movie, you know. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, you know, between five and six, I think there was a lot of stuff that went on. Well, because, they brought yeah, they, up they, in they six. That's what I'm saying. Six was such a it was such a force. We dumb. I just didn't. I didn't get. It's not force. It was excellent. And, okay, with the son, so I just didn't get any of that stuff. And then that carried into complete off camera drama between him and his son. We didn't even see the son until the very end of the Creed two, and it's like. Yeah, he wasn't in Creed one at all. Yeah. And he establishes that, yeah, you know, I haven't really seen him for a few years. And that's what I'm saying um, by well earned. I want, I'd like to have known or understood a little more than just trying to mean to imagine it, to fill in the gaps, to see why that him showing up at the house was earned. Cause he, that was even like, he was like, I don't even recognize these kids are so much older or whatever. It felt, it, it was, it was dumb. I didn't like that. Him ending sitting in the chair should have been the last thing we saw of Rocky period. 
It, w- it was perfect, like you said. And that was, should have been the end of it. No more Rocky movies. But yes, I'd be fine with having more Creed movies without Rocky. I would like to see Rocky one more time on his deathbed. No. No. I want him, I want him dead. Everybody no. else died. No. Everybody no. else died. We'll fight about that another time. But you're, no. I, and I'm not saying you're wrong, but I, I do not want to see that. I want to see it because that is... No, I, 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 I want to see it because every literally everybody else he knows is dead. Except and, his family, his son. Well, sure, but I'm just saying, he, Adrian, Apollo, Mick... Holly, all dead. Duke, Duke is well. Yeah, I guess technically Duke is he dead might too. Be left, but whatever. Yeah, but the point is, is that all of those people are dead. And think about how beautiful that would be if you believe that there's an afterlife, that he would be able to go back and see all of those people. You want to see that? You want to see him appearing in the spirit world? No, and I don't want to see all that. I don't want to see all that. <laughs> but I would like to imagine that you know he is he is His done reception. here, and it would finally be a closure to the Rocky series. Because as long as he's alive, Sylvester Stallone, I could just imagine him at 90 years old, freaking figuring out some way to bring Rocky back when his career is out of other movies and coming back with something. Because I mean, that's what really happened. Like that's what my first thought was when Balboa came out. I was like, okay, well, Sylvester Stallone ran out of Expendables movies. So now he's trying to find something that's going to re-up his career. And guess what it did? Because it did so well, they made another Rambo, two of them, you know? And so, yeah, and watching um, watching Balboa, I I finished the movie with that same conclusion that that's all it was. <laughs> well, regardless of what it was, it was an excellent movie, and you're wrong. Your whole list is wrong. Okay. And, and, so here's what I want. Here's what I want. Now that we've do, we've got taken two and a half hours or something talking about this, I want anyone who got to the end of this, which will probably be like four, uh, <laughs> to comment and tell us why either of us are wrong and why the other one's right because obviously we don't agree so somebody's (laughs) got to tell us why we're right or wrong now remember i am clearly the bigger rocky fan so obviously i should be right but you know you might disagree with me and i want to hear why i think the first person to comment and mention that they got to the end of this and took your challenge and is going to make any commentary on our list i think you should send them rocky shorts that are autographed that will not happen because I'm <laughs> tell you what, you send me Rocky shorts, I'll sign them for you and send them back. Yeah, okay. Free of charge. Yeah, with the colors inverted and the, <laughs> the stripes. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, anyway, this was a fun discussion. It was a long time coming. Um, I think one thing that we can agree on that we all had a lot. We are, we're pretty unified on everything we love about the movies, and pretty much agree on everything that we don't like about some parts of the movies. The only thing is just how much we like of each thing in comparison. That's the only thing we really disagree with. Because I don't think there was anything that I love that you hate or vice versa at all. I think it's just like, I love this more for this reason and you like this more for this reason, which is a good healthy approach. So I think we're pretty equivalent in our uh, fandom. I mean, you're a bigger fan because you don't have a Superman wall, you have a Rocky wall. But um, I think uh, I think we both love and appreciate these movies, and uh, and that's good. This is a really yeah, it's, a, it's a really great franchise, and it's a so so to anybody. First of all, I, I, if you have never seen the Rocky movies and you've watched all two and a half hours of this, I, I question. Yeah, I was gonna say no one has watched this one I, video if they haven't. Yeah, seen the movies. yeah. I mean, you certainly probably should have seen them before, but um, but what I would say is is that. Uh, this is the, I've, I've explained to people when they ask me why I love it so much. I love this movie because one, it's an ultimate underdog story and I love under underdog stories and it's a great love story. And the love story between Adrian and Rocky are just so amazing because it's so simple. They're not, they're not the most beautiful people. They're, they're just regular people living regular lives. And I think it's it's so beautiful. And that's why I love the first one is it's so beautifully done. When you understand it, it's so well done. You're right, it's not the most rewatchable, but it's so well done, it's memorable. Um, I think their love story is all wrapped up in that one in the first half of the second one. I, th- I mean, yeah. Well, well, and on top of that also, you, and you see a lot of that. I love, I love, love, love that in Rocky Balboa, um, the first thing you see is him going to all the places that mean a lot to him about Adrian. And I love my favorite part of that. And the thing that I think 
wrenches at my heart so much is seeing the pain that Polly has going mm -hmm. through all the things. There's the whole thing in that beginning of that movie where Polly the whole time is, is just so annoyed that they're doing it again. And he's going with Rocky. And he finally comes out and says, you treated her good. I treated her bad. I can't do this anymore. You know what I mean? And and so um, Adrian had such a big effect on everybody's lives. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a great thing. And that's what's so great about these movies is it's a it's an action movie, but deep down it's a love story. And it's the perfect love story for a guy who likes action movies. So, yeah. As a, they're, they're great. I love the first one. I love, that's the thing I love about the first one is the Rocky Adrian stuff. I will say that. Especially their first date. Their first date, which is all one shot, by the way, when they're going skating, it's like that entire thing was filming. And he's just, the camera never, I don't think it cuts at all. It's just them following him around as they're doing their skating for three minutes. Well, and, I, and I love how, like, how that all comes about because he asks Polly, what does she like to do? He's like, she likes to ice skate. Mm -hmm. And so he goes and pays okay. extra money and he doesn't even want to ice skate. He yeah. just took he just did it because that's what she wanted to do. Yeah. And in my mind, that's what that's what real love is. Like real love is is not necessarily I think the, the sweetest thing for a couple to do is when one doesn't like something, the other one does, but the one does it because they know it's important to the person. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And uh, and so I think that that's that establishes Rocky's love for Adrian. Mm -hmm. for my favorite cool. thing is like I said on their honeymoon in the second one where he just takes her back to his bed and just that he's he lives in a dump he's got nothing to offer her and she is so she just loves him for him that she doesn't care and none of that matters and that shows for the rest of the story as they go up and down with their finances and stuff that it's, it's always been just about the two of them it's never yeah. been about anything else and that and just him talking to her about how much he loves her and when he's like i'm never gonna leave shavings or hairs little hairs on the sink like all that stuff it's just so so cute how he's just trying to like just make these little promises for her and it's just it's, yeah. it's sweet they're they are a sweet couple a good movie. all right well thanks for watching josh thanks for showing up for one of our videos here and there <laughs> and uh, i will be i will be i hate especially during quarantine i'm going to be very much involved in more videos now yeah i'm sorry i i'm sorry that i missed the one i had something come up we'll be you're honest. fine so anyway thanks for watching. if you actually got through all of this and hey you are a real soldier and you really care about us and supporting our channel so thank you so much um like and subscribe if you for some reason you got here and you didn't subscribe to us yet and if you like maybe, it, maybe now they're like forget this i'm not subscribing to this <laughs> believe me rocky five is like number three anyway <laughs> Uh, if, you have, if you haven't uh, watched these movies in a long time, definitely go back and rewatch them with all of our great insights and wisdom ringing through your head. It's a it's a good time. So anyway, but thanks again for watching, and we will catch you next time on Saints on Cinema.